Chico Muya is an artist and content creator who migrated to Finland from South Africa in 2019. Like his content, our conversation touched upon a wide range of topics. We discuss his experiences in integrating into Finnish society, spirituality and hardships, as well as morality and humanity in modern society. Chico is a thoughtful, yet lively and warm person, and we hit it off almost instantly. So I hope you enjoy the conversation as much as we did. Yeah, and you you mentioned Jordan Peterson earlier. Yeah. And uh he's actually repeated this many times. It's a quote from Dostoevsky, which goes, well, paraphrasing. Like he loves goes something. <laughs> yeah. I love Dostoevsky as well. But it it goes something like this. Um if you gave uh humans complete security uh and all the cake they would want to eat and all they would have to uh occupy themselves with was the continuation of their species. Uh we would stop eating a cake, we would destroy the world <laughs> just for something unexpected to happen. That's basically the, the quote. That is so which I really, interesting. Yeah, I, wrote, I like it a lot. I wonder, what is it, what is it about uh, humanity that is um, wired that way? That That's why for me, when, when, for example, I find one of the weakest arguments of God existing, like when people, mm. t- one of the weakest arguments is, if God exists, why is there evil in the world? <laughs> I'm, I'm like, well, what you just explained is probably exactly why is because like, um, well, I, the, the it, most common argument is that God gave us free will. And that's, yeah, yeah, you know, yeah. We're doing the evil ourselves. Exactly. But then the counter argument to that is that we were made in God's image and why would God's image have evil in it? But then you, the counter argument to that counter argument is that, the, uh, uh, you don't know the grand plan. You yeah, don't, true. You, there's this uh, very, very uh, uh, old story. It's uh, I think it's uh, like a Chinese folk story. Uh-huh. Uh huh. It has a. It, it's about a father who uh, who has a son, and the son uh, falls from a horse, uh, and his uh, leg breaks, and all the people in the village come saying, "Oh no! Oh, we're so sorry for your son." And, the the old farmer is like okay <laughs> the next day uh there's a war and uh soldiers come drafting men and uh well the son can't go to war because his leg is broken and all the village villagers come <laughs> rushing to the house oh you're so lucky and then the guy is like well okay and the story goes on and the the point is you can never know when things happen in life whether they're good or bad for mm. you. So it's best not to uh, <laughs> overreact to, uh, well, neither positive nor negative because uh, you just roll with the punches. Yeah, it's very true. I remember um, with my work, I was mm-hmm. supposed to go to um, to the UK. Um, I, was, I was supposed to go there and be interviewing a bunch of artists and mm. stuff. It was going to be amazing. It was something I was dreaming about and hoping for and work was paying for everything, but I still have my South African passport. Mm. So I had to apply for a visa, Mm. you know, and my work was paying for everything. You know, I've got an apartment in Finland. Mm. uh, I work and sent everything through decision came back. They said no, basically. And, um, I was, I was really upset by that. I was like, what, why? And in, um, their reasoning was that they could not confirm that I wouldn't just stay there. I'm like, bro. How can you ever confirm that? (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. True. Um, and then, and then I was like, okay. And then I saw my, um, my colleagues leaving and I was so sad that exact same day, the time I was supposed to be flying, mm. out of nowhere, I start getting massive tooth pain. <laughs> oh, but it was, um, it was the most painful. So I started getting massive tooth pain. Mm. I got 
I had to go to the dentist. I got mm. one tooth removed and, but the pain continued. Like I, I got back home and I was like, surely the pain's supposed to go. <laughs> you <laughs> Please, know, <laughs> maybe. <Yeah. laughs> but then what happened is the pain got so bad that I was standing right here one in the, one in the morning. I was sweating mm. and shaking and I had like ice water because whenever I put ice water in my mouth, for about, I counted five to six seconds, the pain went away and then came back. And then um, closest to tears I'd ever been uh, from physical pain mm. in years. And I ended up um, going to the emergency ward and there was one lady. Um, yeah, at first I remember arriving there, I was shaking, like shaking. And then the lady's like, Oh, do you have Corona? I was like, I don't care about <laughs> Corona. <laughs> My tooth, I'm dying. And then um, uh, went in and then gave me an injection to mm. numb my mouth for like six hours. And I remember when she injected uh, my jaw and she looked in, apparently when they removed the one tooth, the other tooth that was leaning on it, oh. mm. lost its support. And that's oh, where okay. the extra pain was coming from. So uh, I remember she was like, yeah, open your mouth. And she was like, f like touched in there. The pain, it, it was like electricity running mm -hmm. through my body. And she's like, oh, okay, that's where it is. And I'm like, of course, that's where it is. <laughs> I already knew that. <laughs> yeah. You could have just asked me and I would have just pointed at it. And then um, once she injected it, mm. the relief was godly. It was yeah. like, I almost started crying out of, out of relief. Um, but uh, short, long story short, next day I went and got that tooth removed. Mm. Imagine if I was yeah. in the UK oh, true. at yeah. that time. And then um, I thought I was cursed for not going. But then I was like, I'm blessed. <laughs> you you know? Um, so, so Yeah. We agree. You never know what <laughs> life is going to do. Mm. Um, Convenient segue to... Uh, yeah, I think we went very well. We had kind of the deep end of your life already. Yeah. Now, now <laughs> yeah. we can, now we can probably go on <laughs> such the breakup. Yeah. yeah. Give us a rundown <laughs> of your life so far. What brings you here? Now? Who is yeah. Chica? Yeah, who is Chico? Um, so I'm from South Africa, Cape Town. Uh, before Cape Town, I was in uh, Durban. It's a coastal city in South Africa. Um, but I wasn't born in South Africa. I was actually born, I feel like I keep going back further back. Mm -hmm. I was born in the DRC Congo and my family moved to South Africa when I was like two years old. But it took us a year to get there. There mm -hmm. was war, corruption. My parents had to flee and got to South Africa with nothing. Like we had absolutely nothing. Um, just the clothes on our backs. No one could speak English uh, in the family. And um, and we were taken in by like churches and stuff. Um, and then you fast forward, I started going to school, learning, whatever, got to high school, started playing sports, got really good at that. Um, and then uh, I also went through like a Christian phase, um, like throughout my high school. Mm. So I wasn't one of the guys who had like this crazy teenage years. I was actually quite a good, good, a good boy. Yeah, a good, a good boy before I got corrupted. Oh no! <laughs> by the way. <laughs> um, and then, um, yeah. So, um, so then after that, I started doing music, writing my own music. Um, a fun fact, I started writing my own music because the church didn't want to let me play in the <laughs> church band. So I was like, okay, I'll just write my own music. And uh, why? Um, I'm not quite sure. I, I think it was really weird because I remember teaching one of my friends, a good friend of mine, how to play the guitar. Right. And he'd been doing it for like two months and then, he, he got, got in the band. He got in. The oh band. my god! <laughs> um, 
so suffice it to say, it got me quite upset. Um, but upset in a good way because I was just like, hey, I feel like I've got music mm. in my veins. So mm. I'm going to find a way to get it out. And I continued doing music after, after school. Um, I tried to study teaching, realized it's a terrible job. Um, uh, I, for I got, you, for, for me. You. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah, no, no. <laughs> for for me. Um, I mean, I like teaching in uh, in short bursts. Mm. Like I can do like a a forty five minute lesson or whatever. But the day to day thing, it takes a special kind of person. Have you tried this? Yeah, mm. I, I had to do like a six month um, while I was still studying. I didn't finish the degree. <laughs> <laughs> because um, I was teaching a bit of drama and uh, I was supposed to also teach English, but I didn't get a chance to do that. But I was supposed to be teaching drama. And the you were in to- South Africa then? Yes, yeah, yes, yes, okay. yes. In South Africa. And um, yeah. Uh, but anyway, after that, I decided to start doing music full time. And um, in my music escapades, that that was really interesting because music took me quite a few different places around the country and um, uh, like I put everything into it. Uh, I remember one time being like, oh, I have, I either pay rent or I buy the sick new pedal. Yeah. <laughs> like, and, and it was the only one left. And I was like, hey, things are going to work out. I bought the pedal. <laughs> and anyway, and, uh, and I still have it today, like eight years later, but. Um, Did things work out? Yes, I did not get kicked out of, of my apartment. And then um, and then one day I just realized uh, when I lived in Durban in South Africa, I was like, I need to go to Cape Town. I just, I just had this urge and I had like very little money in my account, but I bought a plane ticket and went. Um, I'd messaged on Facebook. I was like, hey, can anyone host me for like a couple of weeks or a week? And then went there and started doing that uh, music down there. And things were slowly starting to build up. And on one particular day, I was performing. And there was this girl. Um, uh, well, there were two girls. And um, they came and they wanted to buy one of my CDs. Yes, I was selling physical CDs. Mm-hmm. Um, and then we connected. And then it turns out that we were... Um, we ended up vibing, not with both of them, me and, and the one. Mm-hmm. And it turns out she was from some country called Finland. And um, yeah, I was like, she's like, I'm from Finland. I was like, oh, England, that's awesome. <laughs> <laughs> no, Finland. Okay, that's all right. <laughs> um, and uh, I live here and I, I'm still not convinced Finland exists. <laughs> yeah, I think Finland is like, uh, aren't we... A fake country made by the <laughs> we like be made by the Japanese, yeah, the so Japanese. they can use the area for fishing. Yeah. <laughs> That's the most convincing theory for me, I think. Yeah, I, I think I did a reaction video to oh, one okay. of those uh, things. Yeah, yeah, that's that's a, a really weird theory, and then um, and then I ended up moving to Finland for the girl. Um, this was how long ago? Um, this was four years ago hmm. um I, i paused my whole life and i was like i believe in this relationship um she was actually supposed to move to cape town but i think her, her um her dad was quite sick uh so hmm. we kind of decided that i'll i'll move here then i moved here and then tried things didn't work out after a bit of time So we had to go our separate ways. And then um, and then ever since then, I've been living and working here and making videos and working for the company I work for now. And um, and genuinely just trying to, um, I just want to live a pleasant life. You know, I want to, I want to, I want to get the most out of it. Like I want, um, Like I love the feeling of being alive. Mm-hmm. I think it's really awesome. Even even the shitty bits, right? Um, what yeah. what was the what's your what was your reason for 
staying in Finland and not moving back to Cape Town because if you want to do music, I don't know. If, I I don't think Finland is very, really known for blowing up artists in the international <laughs> scene. <laughs> um. Well, I think. Um. The first thing was I didn't think my story with Finland was over mm. because when I first arrived here, it was difficult to try to see the bright side of things. But I ended up really disliking Finland for a while mm. because it, it, yo, it's <laughs> it's <is> so weird. <laughs> like the people, the culture, the, the the food, the language, everything was really confusing. And add on top of that, a, a difficult relationship, and you've got the perfect storm, you yeah. know. And I was and just it's like, cold. Yeah, and it's, yeah, and it's cold, right? I'm, I'm not, I wasn't used to this sort of weather, and, um, and when, when I, the relationship ended, I, I remember thinking to myself, I was like, what happens now? Because mm. uh, we don't have to get into like resident permits and whatever, but I was here because of the. Um, the relationship mm-hmm. I was in mm-hmm. true and then but then my work because I told my work I was like hey guys the jig is up like uh you <laughs> know the fan, yeah. Yeah. yeah and then the, and then I was like unless if you guys want to um vouch for me and um and I stay because of work we can do that and um they graciously did that because um they liked what i did for them which is good so i'm glad i was working hard hmm. um and then they allowed me to stay for work hmm. because because i was just like my whole life was here now like and i didn't want my memory of finland to be like all the stuff i mentioned previously hmm. and then once i stayed something magical began to happen slowly is I began to fall in love with this weird little country and the people and the culture and, um, you know, all its little quirks, um, nature, um, just everything about it. And slowly but surely, South Africa became less and less home. Mm -hmm. And then this became home. So, um, yeah, that's, that's basically why I ended up staying. That's, quite yeah. interesting so if what's your situation now like i i remember from the new kind of gov- government or the new coalition there was this idea of having immigrants if they don't have a paying work for i think a two months period yeah they get deported from finland yeah so are you now if your current job ends are you in danger of that Yeah, I, I, I'm not sure. It, it, does that law still need to be voted on? Yeah, I, 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 I don't think that's in action now. Yeah, but yeah. if it does come to reality, yeah, it's. Uh, I don't understand the thinking behind that. <laughs> mm. I, um, I do understand that uh, there are some areas of immigration that need to be tightened up and that sort of stuff. Um, but yes, to answer your question. If I were out of work for two months or, or two or three months, I'm not yeah. quite sure which one it is, um, I would have to legally leave, right? Um, which is really crazy. I don't understand. It's like um, the people you want here are people who are working, adding to the economy, actually doing good stuff here. And to add on top of everything else that makes it difficult to be someone who comes from a different country here with a different language, different culture. And to add this weird thing about three months, like how do you place your, your, your trust in a country Mm -hmm. like that? If you're coming with your whole family Mm -hmm. Um, and if you are some sort of specialist, I know it can be really difficult to find uh work like if you're some sort of specialist it can take two three months to find uh a good fit right yeah um so yeah that would impact me um but i i don't i don't i would be very surprised if pe- uh, if it was voted for positively and yeah. people thought that was a good idea i understand 
no, I don't understand the thinking behind that. <laughs> but I, I understand um, people do have issues with um, how, well. You can sympathize perceive. with the sentiment. Yeah, I can sympathize with the sentiment. I, I completely agree in terms of if someone comes to your country, they ought to be um, like upstanding citizens and, um, you know, adding to the economy, paying taxes. Um, I pay the same taxes mm -hmm. as everyone else. I would think I should have the same treatment, mm. right? Um, because I think uh, they also had this thing, um, this idea of um, connecting social... Um, uh, what do you call it when let's say you're out of yeah, work in the government security. social security yeah right um connecting the amount of social security you mm. get with how good your finish is uh mm. which in it I, i'm like what 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 are you trying to do not that yeah. I, I mean i haven't lived off social security <laughs> or whatever but it's just the idea behind it uh, it's telling you yeah you you can be here but you kind of like second class mm -hmm. uh, citizen it's all right we'll take your taxes but if you lose your job uh you, countdown's starting and uh, yeah, but yeah. but but stay we we are here for you so that's kind of weird i mm. i'm really confused as to um why they're going about it this way uh it makes no sense i know yeah. the strategy is to overshoot so that because uh, mm. if things get watered down, mm. you at least have a little something. I would guess that's how it usually works. You like, you like pitch something that probably won't happen. Yeah, and then you you just cut back a little bit on that. Yeah, um, maybe so. It's like, yeah, we're not doing the worst possible thing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. So so that's quite interesting. I, I'd be interested for you guys as Finnish people here. Mm. What are your views on? On all of that, have you guys given that any thought? Or uh, well, it's quite it's quite weird uh, making it harder for specialists, especially yeah. like you have the issue of humanitarian immigration that 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 should be handled completely separately yeah. <laughs> from well labor based immigration. Yeah, because like for example, you as a specialist or any other specialist that comes to Finland to work, uh, we are I think. What we are forgetting from the entire discussion is, uh, sure, if you get unemployed and you like pick up social security checks for three months, okay. But you haven't, we haven't had to spend the eighteen years <laughs> of government money on raising you. Yeah, you are still. You can be, you can be unemployed for almost an infinite amount of months well not really but you can be on you can r rely on social security for a very long time and still be way cheaper yeah. as a worker for the finland finnish I government i thought about it that way that's actually quite interesting yeah yeah so yeah. that's just doesn't very seem very uh intelligent to make it more difficult for people who have who have a kind of the additional value yeah and then of course who has addi additional value you it's very hard to draw the line there yeah but come on <laughs> if we are a i think if we are a free country uh, that is our economy is kind of a capitalist socialist mix yeah then you should at least be uh it would be intelligent to give every immigrant that's well a specialist or a labor labor based immigrant the best possible opportunities yeah. to then prove themselves that's yep. <clears> the <throat> best case scenario for all of us it's very mm, it's very hard to believe that it's a good idea to have make kind of nerf <laughs> or make their opportunities harder and then also be tougher on them on the restrictions it's a bad, it's a bad combo, and I don't think we'll come out on top with it. Humanitarian immigration, of course, it's a completely different yeah. issue. Yeah. yeah, that that has to be. I I think we probably would have had a whole episode on it if if Ari and I had a solution on it. But humanitarian yeah. immigration, you have to have a specific amount you are willing to, you know, chip in to the global pool and help help people in need. 
Yeah, and then you also have to have an institution that can then yeah. at least yeah. somehow uh, secure or know beyond reasonable doubt that you mm. are in need of the yeah. like place. Yeah, and if if you are a humanitarian immigrant, you are being you are not being taken in because you certainly add value to the, to the society. Yeah. You are being mm. taken in <clears throat> as a service. And therefore, there needs to be... You can have harder restrictions on humanitarian immigrants. That doesn't... I don't understand why we are taking that out of the question completely. We yeah. are messing it up for all immigrants with that kind of logic. You can have different restrictions. You, have, you can have different social security thresholds you need to meet as a humanitarian immigrant, if you want to, for example, uh, further down the line, become a citizen in Finland. Yeah. yeah. The, the problem, as far as I understand, mm. Mm. is that we are lacking the resources to know beyond reasonable doubt that all the the people coming through, uh, like humanitarian immigration, uh, port gates, <laughs> that's yeah, yeah, brute, yeah. Uh, are legit. Right. So then you have to, then you just add them to the pool of immigrants and try to treat them all the same. Yeah, but Because I if think, you, yeah, yeah. let's say the border between uh, Turkey and Greece, it's full of passports people throw away. Really? Then, yeah. Oh. yeah uh, all the trash cans are there. They're just full of passports because people, uh, well... Your Wait, chances so of throw your chances, away the yes, your yeah. chances of securing when they pass the yeah. Mediterranean. Oh, yes, snap. your chances of securing uh, the spot in the well, R- refugee camp. Yeah, refugee camps Asylum. or uh, refugee programs or getting into countries. It's that way is crazy. bigger if you just. Yeah, because they don't know where to send you back. Yeah, they, they, they don't know, know where to send you back. They don't know where to check your information. They don't because you can mm. tell them a different name. Or yeah. How do they? You can tell them a different country, and then they'll just have to buy it. But that's kind of weird because. And it, what do you do then? Oof, that is weird. That is, I mean, how do you deal with that? Mm. But, this but, is how we've been dealing with it. It's of course suboptimal, but it's, yeah, you have yeah, to but do I, I think the argument, or the counter argument to you know how how do you know if a person is a humanitarian immigrant is well well of course in that case this might may, may not apply but the counter argument has been that if we only take humanitarian immigrants from the refugee camps through our quota humanitarian immigration mm-hmm. system then we can at least kind of be sure that yeah they have they're because, probably legit because yeah. the because someone there is so yeah shit yeah because i think we had And of course, this this fact can be checked. But uh, we had Seda Sohrabi on on a very one of our I think first episodes ever, and I think she said something like along the lines of people who are able to travel or buy uh, the kind of traveling I don't know services, but yeah. buy the people who are able to afford the route from some country to Finland. They are not kind of in need yeah. of Finnish asylums because that route is so expensive to go through. Right, they, they could probably like stay in any of the countries uh, on the route, and that's why they're usually young males. Yeah, yeah I, I and also think uh, something that um, to add into all of this mm. is is the fact that I think we've noticed with places like Sweden that if you don't mm. find a way to Um, integrate integrate yeah. people really well, and um, Finnish people have a very have yeah, certain very values <laughs> values that they mm. hold in high regard, right? And if you bring people from different countries with a completely different system, mm. um, uh, with completely different morals, mm. and then it clashes with uh, how how Finnish culture actually is, mm. that will at least. Uh, on the national stage, when people are watching, that will mm. aggravate people, and that's and 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 then I think that's why some of these crazy laws are trying to be passed mm. because it's like um, I'm not I'm not quite sure where it was happening. Have you guys seen that n- the no no square dance? Um, it, it I'm was not familiar. Oh, really? It was this TikTok dance where mm. 
I don't know where it was in Finland, some city okay. um, where there was a lot of sexual assault, mostly committed by um, immigrants mm -hmm. um, um, who were uh, like asylum seekers and whatever. Mm -hmm. And then they created this whole TikTok dance to to stop that from happening. Interesting. And it was no, no, it was the cringiest thing ever. And, and you know... <laughs> it went viral <laughs> in in a lot of like Asian countries where they started using it as like their... Uh, Without knowing where it came from. Obviously. Oh, well, well, I think they were making fun of it. Oh, okay. <laughs> because I mean, the idea, I think it goes, it goes, no, stop. This is my no, no square. And it's like this weird dance and whatever. And <laughs> it just looks really terrible. But the point is for people who live mm -hmm. here, seeing that, hearing that, what there's a lot of sexual assault happening mm, because mm. people who actually don't need to be here are here and causing that that just aggravates people right mm -hmm. and then um so so it is and I, and i'm not quite sure as to all the numbers and yeah yeah and whatever you it, can probably it, to kind of twist the numbers in yeah. a way to suit your agenda yeah. yeah exactly but then you also kind of get to this idea of like if you come into someone's home and they allow you to stay there, um, like if I go stay at a friend's place, I would usually be extra clean and, and you know, and I'd offer, I'd make sure yeah. I'm, I'm not disturbing their place because they let me in, right? So I think there is kind of like um, more more pressure on you to to actually add something good. So I think that's why people get uh, don't have a lot of tolerance for for that sort of stuff. Yeah, and then also uh, there's this uh, pretty problematic, well, the way, psychologically speaking, people usually uh, approach feeling like an outsider is pretending you don't want to be in. Yeah. Which then also causes uh, people to treat you as an outsider. Say say that one more time. Yeah. If you feel like you're an outsider, uh -huh. the usual defense from you oh, is so to act, act like, like you don't yeah. need the, mm. the surrounding group. Right. And then you then, make your own little community. Yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah. And you perhaps act entitled. You perhaps degrade the culture. You perhaps... Whatever. You... Uh, Oof. Yeah, act like you don't respect it because you feel like they don't want you here, and you're just well trying to uh, just find your own path there. It's pretty pretty hard, I think. Yeah, I think that plays a part in it, especially with like younger people. Mm. Uh, how would um, how would how would we go about actually trying to integrate people properly or uh, because i think even if you are bringing people in because of a humanitarian mm -hmm. crisis or whatever i would think you would still vet the people make sure that it's not like a serial killer or something mm -hmm. or like mm -hmm. you know i don't care where you're coming from or how desperate you are if you're like a serial killer like yeah. <laughs> find another place you know what i'm saying uh mm. I, I do think that that they should be a good screening process. But the tricky thing is how do you actually integrate people um, into your society? But I also think the burden falls on someone who comes to the country should have the mindset of mm -hmm. I'm going to try and integrate. Yeah. I think it's kind of wild that someone can come from a different place and be like, why isn't country bowing down to me yeah you know sure. what i'm saying yeah. that that is kind of crazy yeah, well uh, it's it's but, it's probably two-way street it is and like let's let's be fair coming into finland this is probably one of the hardest countries to integrate into oh we yeah. are we are probably no not doubt. not the most like welcoming <laughs> group of people you'll find <clears throat> probably you know going to a bus and sitting next to someone that's finished and starting talk, talking to them in English, it's that I don't think uh, that's going to... Well, sometimes it might. Talking uh, yeah, to someone yeah. on a bus? Yeah, 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 exactly. <laughs> yeah. And there aren't many, like, uh, 
Yeah, you like don't have the easy way. To, yeah, yeah. yeah there, there aren't many places to get in. Mm. It's no, not you're like right. you can we don't walk, have in, a lot of like, walk into yeah, a yeah. bazaar or a busy restaurant and start talking to people. We don't have those. Because it's a cold country, people are inside. They're with their true, close true. kin. Mm. And that's how our society has developed. Right. I didn't even think about that because uh, my way of coming mm-hmm. here, I was already kind of um like i came here for someone yeah you already and, and i was already people, yeah. a little bit into uh, in the 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 little cul-de-sac or whatever mm. like um so so yeah it's true um uh, i'm just thinking about that from that perspective yeah that would be quite difficult right but then again then again um yes i think we need to find a way to make things easier for people coming here. Mm. Um, but there's some, I don't know if there's a way to somehow create some sort of um, incentives mm. to like, you know, if you come here, Hey, if you, I don't know, um, take this sort of course or do whatever, you know, we can offer you these things for free mm-hmm. or, mm-hmm. or Hey, if you come here, you have to learn this or yeah. whatever. I don't, I don't know if that would be, I, I wonder <laughs> if, if, because now I'm just thinking, I'm like, is that, is that cruel? But like, I, I don't. If you want people think... to integrate, there yeah. is a right answer. The, the answer is, because you were asking this before. Right. Uh, the answer is language. Mm. People aren't uh, inherently racist. People aren't inherently uh well let, let let's uh, say it like this uh you walk into a room and uh whatever the people look like they speak your language and they speak it in exactly the way you do the same dialect same everything right. same manner same words you integrate uh, instantly you yeah that is very people true. are way more racist towards dialects different yeah. dialects or yeah. different accents Mm. than they are with race or ethnicity or whatever. So uh-huh. the answer to integration is it always begins with language, I think. No, I, th- I think that is absolutely true. Which, speaking about language, uh, this is where in the discussion I start feeling a little bit guilty mm-hmm. because, <laughs> because I, I still haven't, yeah, I was going to ask if yeah. you're if you're gonna if you're Me planning too. on learning yeah, Finnish. Yeah, I, I mean, um, b- because when I first moved here, mm-hmm. I'll be honest. Like I said, I didn't like it here, and I was planning in my head. I was like, I'm gonna I gotta be get here, out. Yeah. I'm gonna be here, work really hard, and then move to America. Like uh, with my partner at the time, I was like, mm-hmm. oh, uh, my uh, girlfriend at the time. I was like, hey, yeah, will. Um, I'll try get us to America or something because this is crazy. <laughs> like, you know, mm. and then once I started going through everything I was going through, I, I just didn't have the mental, emotional energy to, mm. to, to focus on that. Mm. But what I try to focus on is I try to dive head first into the culture and into, um, into seeing the beauty of Finnish culture, the foods. I, I started making like YouTube videos about that. I was um, quite passionate. That was kind of my way mm-hmm. of um, integrating in a way. Mm-hmm. Um, but then, um, but in the same breath, I do know that in certain aspects, things would have been so much easier and smoother if I could just speak Finnish, which now I, I I'm in the process of trying to start learning Finnish. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> process of trying yeah, to yeah, start yeah. to learn. Yeah. It's uh, work in progress. Yeah. Yeah, it's a work in progress. I'm um no, I genuinely <laughs> want to. Mm-hmm. Um uh, but I've actually I actually don't have a good excuse. Uh, <laughs> so so that's why when I'll, it comes I'll give you one. What? We Finns actually might make it pretty hard for uh, yeah, we always speak English immigrants to immigrants. Yeah. What's that? We always, if we, if it seems that the 
the person we're talking to might not be comfortable speaking Finnish yeah. or their Finnish is sort of broken or something. Right. We're usually just really comfortable with just the switching to English. Yeah. Which then in turn leads to the people never N- learning. Never learning yeah. the language. Yeah. I, I have mean, you noticed that? Yeah, no, I have noticed that. Yeah. Um, well, I mean, I've tried to. Tried speaking I was Finnish just about so to say, <laughs> yeah, I've noticed because I've tried to speak Finnish so <laughs> often. No, um, I have noticed that the Finnish people are really quick to speak in English. Um, and I still, I think both things can be true at once. Mm-hmm. On the one hand, my Finnish is trash. <laughs> and on the other hand, people should learn Finnish. Mm. Uh, yeah. it, I, I mean, I don't know how to say it any and better than that. You can be the uh, like exception to the rule. No, don't give him the excuse. Let's say you should learn Finnish. It's a beautiful language. Yeah, and I if think you so. like the country, then I don't know. Yeah. But if you live in Helsinki, you're working in English. Well, it's more fun to be in Finland, I think. Yeah. It is a lot of Finnish. And it's a because you it's can really like, fun you know, language. read stuff. <laughs> <laughs> true. You no, know, it is true. It is true. I, I think me working a lot in English and... Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, like you don't probably need Finnish in yeah, Helsinki like, at all. Like in my day-to-day, mm-hmm. you know. like everything I do is in English. The company I work for is international. Mm-hmm. Um, the friends I keep are the ones who actually want to be speaking English, um, Mm -hmm. you know, and this obviously isn't an excuse. And I think it just makes it that much more little difficult. Yeah. There's no real, like, there's no absolutely necessary incentive. Yeah. That's pushing you to it. Yeah. Yeah. Um, And I think I would want to learn it just for the Mm. sake of it. And, and if I end up having kids one day, Mm -hmm. I'll, I need to be able to speak Finnish. I think Mm -hmm. that's an absolute must, right? So, so it will happen. Maybe the next interview we have, uh, (laughs) true. uh, Well, this is going to be like completely in Finnish. Uh, um, But yeah, um, so yeah, that's why I was just saying Mm -hmm. the language thing. I always feel a little bit um, uh, guilty when I talk about that aspect of it. (laughs) Mm. I feel like I don't have any right to be like. People who come here need to learn the language, and, I, and I'm here like, well, <laughs> true. Um, yeah, yeah. But I have still tried to integrate. Like mm-hmm. I think, um, I have found a way to integrate without the language. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think the integration, showing, um, reflecting back the same mm-hmm. values, mm-hmm. treating people with mm-hmm. respect, um, all these, all, all these sort of things, working hard not not um being a menace to society yeah um trying to put some good in the world uh you know all all those things i feel like even if you haven't mastered the language Mm -hmm. if that is the posture of your of your heart i think people are so much more willing but if you come here and you're like this trashy language I'm not learning. Why the hell do I have to learn this? Yeah. Why do I have to be a part of what you guys are doing? I think people can kind of sense that. Yeah, you, yeah. you know. You well, also, also in Finland, like I think you'll absolutely get 95 percent of the way just by reflecting the Finnish values True. and culture. Yeah, because yeah. Yeah. We don't, I don't know if you've noticed, but we don't really speak to strangers, <laughs> so you very rarely get caught for not speaking Finnish. <laughs> true, true, and and another thing. Which make probably makes Finland uh, a bit easier to integrate into is that we have we don't. Uh, this is a problem, actually. I think mm-hmm. we don't mm. share a very like a common pride in Finnish culture, and being Finnish. Really, so you don't? Someone, I don't think so. Yeah. Okay. Mm. Why do you say that? Or oh, uh, do you have any um, subjective or objective uh, views on that? Like, why do you think? Well, uh, the two examples that come come to mind, they're both from Sweden, but we're pretty pretty similar. You're right. Uh, <laughs> the first one is the, uh, not the current, but the previous uh, Swedish prime minister when uh, being asked about uh, immigration, actually. Uh, the, the journalist was like, are you scared that with so many uh, strong cultures coming to... Uh, uh, Sweden, that Swedish culture is uh, uh, threatened at all. Mm. 
the the minister answered, "What culture are you talking about? Oof, what yeah. Swedish culture?" Mm. Uh, but this is a few, like six, seven years back. Yeah, and then, feeling the pain of that now. <laughs> but yeah. True, true. <laughs> yeah, it was also the first uh, openly feminist prime minister. That just so happens. What does that even? Uh, never mind. Uh, uh, let's let's, let's skip that. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, no, no, don't worry about that. Yeah, uh, pretty far left politician. Anyway, uh, the other is actually from Greta Thunberg. Who? Uh, How dare you? <laughs> that was a pretty good impres- yeah, impersonation. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> How dare you? Um, recently, in an interview. Uh, I don't remember the Swedish Independence Day, but we're uh, closing in, if not past it already. Okay. She was asked about uh, how she feels about Swedish culture. Right. And she was like, I don't think Swedish culture is very important to uh, us Swedes. And I think a lot of Swedes feel the same way. And uh, being Swedish is just about respecting (sighs) others and so on. Some pretty, like really basic values. Which, yeah, I, I think is pretty interesting considering you have centuries and centuries of uh, history and right. uh, pretty shared uh, history and identity and so on. But then, yeah, I think we Finns, uh, many Finns share the sentiment and we at least have some inferiority complex compared to uh, other uh, cultures. Yeah, I, I, and I also think like... Um one thing I do find quite interesting about all this is um, I hate it when I lose my train of thought. It's <laughs> the most annoying thing. It, yeah, this this whole thing about one thing I find on the political spectrum, mm. people who are a lot more left leaning, they seem to lean more towards this thing of oh, national pride, national identity. Psh, we're all human. Yep. Like let's whoops let's let's all just be human together. Um, yeah. but it's like, but then what's binding you? Exactly. Like what, what is the, mm, and it, and then on the right, um, uh, this idea of, Hey, we are like on the absolute right. You, this idea of like, Hey, f- only Finnish people, yeah, like, no nationalism, th- th- yeah. this is all we doing. And it's like, I think both can be true and you can find someone between where it's like, mm. it's true. I think there does need to be something that binds a country together. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, You know, like, otherwise, what are you? Um, You know, uh, when, when countries are more homogenous and Mm -hmm. usually they function better. better, I know it sounds crazy to say, but that's just the way it is. Um, So I think this idea of everyone is just the same. We, whatever no there's completely different values attached to those Mm -hmm. um the thing that everyone agrees is like hey this is what it means to be us like you know there's there's history attached to that there's uh the way you act and behave Mm -hmm. values all those things are completely attached to to you and maybe once upon a time it used to be like religion religion used to bind countries together um, it still does in many countries. Yes, it mm. still does in many countries. Um, and uh, now that we kind of getting rid of those sort of things, and um, like the case with Baivi uh, Rasenen, mm-hmm. like uh, now things are getting spicy like yeah. around there. But like, yeah, so I don't know. I definitely think you you have to have something that binds you. Or else it's just going to devolve into chaos. I yeah, I don't. I don't really agree with like Finland having a national identity crisis. Maybe, maybe Helsinki. Yeah, I think Helsinki, that's, that's a uh, lot more probable. Helsinki cosmopolitan uh, right. loss of identity uh. due to the well cosmopolitan ideal of like humanism. Right. Yeah, because, sure. Because I, I think yeah. most most Finns. Maybe it's. Kind of because we are mostly I don't know how do you describe it do you, do you call it a quiet culture but yeah, <laughs> we, we don't we don't really bring our Finnishness to the front mm. 
a, a lot. We have some mm. common traditions and events, but they're not super flashy and super super big. Right. Yeah, they're like we don't bring our bring out the Finnish culture in that oh, way. Yeah. We have yeah. it's more I think I don't know if this is stupid, but it feels more implicit between like the culture and tradition and values. I and remember uh, mm. my uh middle school teacher uh he he made a distinction between uh strong cultures and uh weak cultures mm. and uh the the distinction was between or he, he uh, played like a scenario and the scenario was uh a family or a person moves to another country how quickly do they uh begin to live in the ways of the other country and how mm. much do they bring their own culture to that country and uh in that sense i think fin- finnish culture is on the weaker side mm. if we move to another country I, i don't know how much of our finnishness like you're actually we bring right. but then let's say you're uh you come from a uh, let's say a, a very uh country where islam is very uh prevalent and you let's say you pray five times a day and you have all the uh things that come with that and mm. you uh dress a certain way we don't dress a certain way mm-hmm. uh, that's already it, it's visible to everyone and yeah and so on then, then that's a stronger culture that's a weaker culture Because yeah Finns, yeah. Finns we we rarely kind of immigrate to anywhere as families mm. yeah we, almost always when a Finnish person moves to another country they go alone mm. when they kind of need to fit in and not really boast that <laughs> look look yeah. how different i am right you know? because True. because online i i personally it's quite interesting you say that is because i i fiercely defend finnish culture like like even in the content i put out mm. the jokes i talk about they they all just kind of bring to the forefront something that most finnish people kind of all agree with mm. um and Um, yeah, I fiercely defended. Like I remember on Twitter or mm. X now, I guess. Um, uh, on I remember someone was some like more right leaning. Oh, you can have the coffee if you want. Yeah, let's take a coffee break in yeah. five minutes. But yeah. you, you oh, can, oh, you yeah, can yeah. finish this. Thing. All right. Um, anyway, uh, on this more right leaning person was um, had a little video of hobby horsing. Mm. Uh, you know where you have <laughs> yeah, the yeah. fake horse and yeah, whatever yeah, yeah. and i won't lie if you've never seen it before it looks kind of whack you're like <laughs> what what is going on here but once you get into it you completely understand people are just having fun mm-hmm. not hurting anyone not everyone can afford a freaking horse mm-hmm. like you know and people yeah, are just yeah, having pretty fun. expensive <laughs> and then this person uh wrote they're like oh this is ve- vegan horse horse racing <laughs> I was like, I was like, bro, this is called hobby horsing in Finland, and these are people just having a good time. We, Finnish people love meat, like mm. vegan horse riding. What, what are you talking about? And um, so that's why I think for me right now, having lived here and experiencing the culture and seeing how the culture and the way people are raised here, how it affects society in terms of crime and and the way the system works things work here so there's obviously something freaking good about it and it should be celebrated so yeah. it's like um so i find it crazy that anyone might think that um diluting or actually i don't know why finnish people are not more outwardly um proud oh no actually finnish people are very proud of their culture mm. but maybe silently Yeah, mm. I think so. Yeah, very, very expressive. Feel yeah, more. if we exclude the uh, very the, the the idealistic cosmopolitans, then yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, they're so, pretty yeah. P- prevalent in Helsinki. Or, loud, yeah. loud at least. Yeah, yeah. We're southern Finland, I would say. Really, I, yeah. I haven't. I won't lie. I haven't really paid. You too much haven't attention. gone to university in Finland. Yeah. So. Oh no, yeah. I have not. What no. what, what is? What is university culture like here in Finland? In well, we are the wrong people for yeah, that because one. we're not. We, at least so far, we just skipped university. <laughs> yeah. 
because it's <laughs> possible now. Oh yeah, true. To just start a career, yeah. That is really true. But we could perhaps yeah, take a five-minute yeah, break. And yeah, coffee break. Yeah. Uh, I can get so lost in video making. Mm-hmm. Like, bro, I, c- I could literally sit there and then I get messages from friends. I'm like, what friends? <laughs> <laughs> um, but I'd love to start doing a little bit of that for with my actual music because mm-hmm. it's a very... It's a very important part of who I am. But for the last little while, I've been so focused on creating content and I've Mm -hmm. grown like three different accounts to quite substantial amounts, which shows that I've actually learned how. Yeah, yeah, you know the code. uh, Yeah, I kind of understand how to create content Mm -hmm. and to make it good, uh, right? But that has come at the expense of me, uh, of music taking a back seat. Mm -hmm which I only reali- realize now it actually bothers me. Um, it actually really d- does bother me. And uh, But the thing about being an adult is whatever situation you find yourself in, you have the ability to change that situation by the choices you make. <laughs> exactly. So I've got no one to oh, blame. Oh, freedom, yeah. you mean. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah exactly. <laughs> and uh, coming back to Jordan Peterson, I... Yeah. Uh, we, I remember we're starting to begin begin every episode and every like new segment with Jordan Peters. <laughs> yeah, that's a, it's my fault. Yeah. Uh, um, it's okay. But, uh, there was a, I think it's a, I think it's 2017, the the person that he lectures, but it's it's whatever. Uh, there was a question from the audience, and someone asked, uh, "How do I begin uh, putting my life in order?" Right, and. Uh, he gave a pretty simple formula. The thing was, uh, because there's there's always uh, uh, like a, an infinite amount of things to uh, focus on and right. to get better at and to whatever. Uh, ask yourself, what bothers you? Hmm. And the things that bother you, uh, because there's probably a few things and they're from different areas of life. Those are the things you should orient yourself uh, so with. So good. And uh, because if they bother you, uh, ask yourself why. And if it is uh, like a, <laughs> uh, a morally good reason, right? pursue it. And if, let's say, you just <laughs> admitted that uh, music taking a backseat bothers you, there's probably a reason, there's probably a calling inside you. You, How did I set just, myself up a trap like this? <laughs> 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 no, no, it's really true. No, I agree. Um, no, I think um, perhaps a bit along the same lines, I think Jordan, B- Jordan Peterson gave a different, almost the same answer, but the same question. He had the answer of uh, if you're, for example, sitting sitting in your room and you ask yourself, what's one thing that I know I'm doing wrong, mm-hmm. <laughs> that so I know good. I could correct in my daily life. That's and so I, good. Yeah, yeah. And I know that I have the like willpower to correct yeah. it. Do, do you know I um and I completely agree with mm. that. I've got a a slightly different way of looking at it because have you ever had it where you just feel like trash and you don't know why mm-hmm. you just mm. um you could be. I don't know, you think it's your work, you think it's whatever, and it all kind of gets mixed. And I remember this was freaking me out and I spent some time writing down. I was like, I tried to create um, to to different compartments of my life that if they uh, that area is good or bad, it affects my life mm-hmm. drastically. And I found five things, um, num- um, and in no particular order... <laughs> <laughs> and in no particular order, uh, I'd say one is um, relationships. Mm-hmm. Um, two is spirituality, like uh, your reason for being. Three, and these two things, but it's basically one, I'd say emotional, mental. Um, and then, wait, I've got it up there, actually. Mm-hmm. Uh, then there's physical and then there's money. Mm-hmm. Mm. I found that every problem I have in my life has to do with one of those things. Like if I'm chilling there and I'm like, there's no point in life. Well, what are my views on spirituality or 
um, at least connecting with something a little bigger than who I am. You know, mm-hmm. uh, I grew up in a really poor home. I have seen how not having money destroys um, mm. uh, the quality of life. So it's like, um, so instead of just sitting there and I'm like, oh, my life is a mess. I'm like, what area in my life is causing me issues? Um, if I'm feeling aimless, this is one thing. If um, the way I view the world is it has a negative twist to it. So it's the emotional, mm-hmm. mental, like uh, what is my paradigm of the world, mm-hmm. uh, you know? And that has been like an absolute breakthrough uh, in terms of how I orient my life now, mm-hmm. you know? A physical, sometimes, most of the times you're not depressed. You just didn't sleep well. You didn't eat, you hangry actually, <laughs> but because you don't know how to separate, you just throw it into this pot of, hey, I'm a confused human. Mm. When it's like, we've actually got so much more agency and I, I think we are gifted with a mind for a reason so that we can actually reason through things. Mm. Like sometimes like for, for example, I started um, doing morning exercises not, I didn't go to the gym because I knew that if I went to the gym, I'd create excuses. So, yeah, yeah. so I decided that every morning, most mornings, without fail, I'd wake up and do push-ups and sit-ups and that sort of thing. And one thing I realized is that just on a purely physical level, when, when I wake up in the morning, I feel absolutely trash, let's just say. Mm. Um, I allow that feeling to be there. I'm like, I I woke up. I'm not going to stress about this feeling. I feel trash right now. That's completely all right. That's, that's fine. My body just woke up and then I will do an exercise. And just off that exercise, I always immediately feel at least 40 to 50% better. Like I've already, I feel like I, I, I just like lifted my, my mood to a certain level Mm. Uh, and that was purely just the physical side of things. If I didn't do that, uh, and also about those five things, they all interconnect and they all mixed in together. So your physicality can affect different areas. Mm-hmm. And there are times when you have to lean on one more than the other. Let's say, um, I don't know, you, you're sick, right? You've got no control over that. So hey, maybe you need to rely more on relationships and spirituality at that moment or, um, you know. And and I noticed that um, something I would love people to know, um, especially guys in particular, is this idea that you have more control over life, over the way you experience it. (laughs) than you think. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I, I don't know if you guys have ever heard of uh, Viktor Frankl. Yes. Yeah. I, yeah. I, yeah. I, there's hardly a the podcast episode where yeah. I don't mention Really? Yeah. yeah. Um, there, there's, oh, I, I can't even remember the exact quote, but it has... I might remember. It, yeah, yeah. It, 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 <laughs> has, it has always it touched my heart. Um, it, yeah. It's something, something along the lines of... Um, uh, if I can try and paraphrase it, um, how does he say it again? Um, something along the lines of you, uh, there's something that they can't take away from you. Yes. Uh, uh, the way you act, mm. uh, the, uh, your choices. Um, yes, it was, uh, it's from uh, the first part of a man's search for meaning when they yeah. arrive at the concentration camps and they're uh, stripped naked and they're all, all their, uh, possessions are taken from them probably burnt or if there's anything valuable they take it for use and they uh take your hair away they take everything away and then he looks at the mirror and thinks to himself damn they could take all this away from me but i'm i'm still me that is you can't take that away i want to actually quickly yeah um actually uh i think i think the the quote is worth reading. Um, let's see. If, um, I was actually gonna mention Frankel just from your like. Uh, really, the, from what yeah, I was saying yeah, there. Yeah. The the taxonomy of like what <laughs> bothers you. Um, then again, that's not really a surprise. 
<laughs> Something. Oh yeah, everything can be taken from a man, but one, uh, but one thing: the last of the human freedoms to choose one's attitude mm-hmm. in any given set of circumstances, to choose one 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 owns one's own way, and. I have not heard something so powerful before is we live in this world. We are, we are born. um, We didn't have a choice in that. Right. But it is evident that we have some sort of control over something innate in us that no one can take away from us. And we are not like leaves blown in the wind, you know, I think in a lot of our lives, we can, we can actually be the wind and not the leaf being blown by it, you know? And I think if more people um, began to see that they are not victims Mm -hmm. to their emotions, Mm -hmm. you know, they, um, at the very least, if everything is taken from you, you can still choose inside to see things how you want to. Exactly. You know? And I think, um, so so this whole thing about separating that has genuinely changed my life and it's just super practical things yeah, you know yeah. like really like um uh yeah so so I'm really blown away by by that and my life has been better for it <laughs> yeah i think everyone's life will be better after reading master from meaning if you i actually haven't read the whole thing i should you should yeah yeah right after you know learning finish <laughs> or maybe you can start with it Le- i think it's really it's a lower finish, barrier yeah, uh, yeah, yeah true. <laughs> um i would i'll, I'll give you another incentive because uh-huh. uh, probably the my quality of life uh improved the most uh out of all the wisdom i've read um, after uh reading man's shirt for meaning really uh, yeah and the most uh like what touched me the most was uh franco's like uh taxonomy of what creates uh meaning in your life and uh he divided meaning into three categories right and the first one was the most obvious one it was what we usually associate with like doing something meaningful right uh and it was doing things that then make you feel like you're progressing on the path that's your path whatever that may be may, might be your career might be uh, improving your relationship whatever uh, getting good grades those sorts of things uh, the second thing was being in touch with the innate beauty of the universe because there's there are moments that are just somehow beautiful they somehow feel mm. meaningful and i felt like i've i had sort of sort of lost that because i felt in those moments i felt childish things are beautiful but i need to get to work i need to <laughs> right. get things done but there's as much meaning as you can get from your career you can get from smelling the air yeah having a pleasant interaction yeah. eating good food and so on those sorts of things and you should place equal value on that and the third thing which blew my mind uh the third category was suffering suffering is a uh, an inevitable fact of life but it's such a, i'm getting like yeah shivers dude, I'm, I'm getting hit right uh, now man uh, continue yeah uh and i've been actually thinking about this a lot right uh suffering is the clearest uh, suffering brings the mind body disconnection back together instantly because uh, happiness you can snap out of it instantly even sadness let's say uh, <laughs> you're sad but then 
something comes up and you can instantly orient yourself. I win a million yeah. euros. Yeah, sure. Yeah. Uh, suffering, it's a fact. There's no way to escape from suffering, be it physical or mental or a connection of the two. And suffering is always, it's your own. And it gives you a clear direction every time. And every time you're offered, when you're suffering, you're offered a chance to ascend. You're so offered a good. chance yeah. to, if so I get th through this, I, I, I know I'm a stronger person. Mm. So, and that's why, <laughs> that's why many philosophers, starting basically from uh, Schopenhauer, mm. which I don't know if you're familiar with. But yeah, I've heard. Yeah, yeah, he's the guy who had the most terrible life ever. Uh, just like the worst life you can imagine a person to have. And he came to the realization that suffering is uh, the most important <laughs> thing in uh, growth. It's just, and you can you can see from people's eyes mm. if they've like lived a life of suffering. And it's if if it hasn't broken them, it's always made them stronger. And that's yeah. why the Nietzsche quote, whatever, what doesn't kill you makes you stronger. Makes is, you stronger. Yeah. yeah, everyone knows it. It's like a fact. And I, yeah, I really like that. And, and I guess in, in some sort of weird way, it seems like because we can get so stuck, uh, stuck in the, the normality of life, uh, like you say, mm -hmm. go to work, blah, blah, blah. We do all these things. There are moments in life when something happens that is beyond our control that forces us to have to, um, like you said, the mind body connection mm -hmm. uh to to kind of bring you back into like yeah hey the, some of these things that i thought were so important are not right now like mm. for example my mother bless her i love her mm. but uh she stresses a lot like her whole life she's really uh, a big stresser right mm -hmm. and um more recently she was just like um again pretty stressed out about stuff about money about whatever and then she went to the hospital and she was getting pain in her throat and then there was like a weird growth in her throat and for um like a week or two she was unbelievably stressed mm -hmm. obviously and her worries about like money and whatever mm. very quickly took a back seat at that mm -hmm. moment it was like hey i'd be poor and happy if just as long as this isn't yeah, something yeah, yeah. crazy. Yeah. And then finally she went to the hospital and it turns out it something weird. It, it like, it was weird tendons that kind of grew at the back mm -hmm. and then they were able to easily cut it out and whatever. And then she was uh, shining with gratitude, right? She was, she was absolutely just buzzing with it. And I was like, Hey, you went through something really scary, mm -hmm. but nothing else was going to snap you out of that <laughs> except what you've just been through now. Mm -hmm. Now, why do we have to wait for something bad in life to happen to find that same gratitude? Like you, you were saying, is it possible to maybe wake up and take a deep breath and just in that moment, just the feeling of breath rushing through your lungs, the fact that you're alive and be able to find just some bit of gratitude within that. And uh, it's almost like you, you simply for being, for mm -hmm. existing, because you being able to exist, uh, I, I think someone crunched some of the numbers. Like it's, it's crazy. Yeah. Like the chances of you yeah. existing, yeah. Let's not even talk about how the Big Bang even happened yeah. or what that is, but uh, let's just say it happened naturally. Mm -hmm. And everything that could have happened, the fact that you are here now is insane. And it's and and sometimes I find myself, I'm like, why am I worrying about this little thing yeah. when there is so much more? Uh, I feel like if we truly got to understand the magnitude and the the miracle 
and the beauty of us existing, if we truly understand that, I feel like we would walk around crying with joy every moment. Mm. And last thing I remember um, being a kid, I was like, um, like I used to be a part of a church and stuff. And I was in primary school. I, I must have been like eight, mm-hmm. nine, um, maybe 10. And I was walking from school and I'll never forget this. And I still don't understand this. And I used to do this thing where I'd, I'd talk to God mm-hmm. when I'd walk, uh, I'd pray or whatever. Um, but uh, in really casual way. Mm-hmm. And then I remember um, I was walking through this park and out of nowhere, um, I got hit with euphoria that I'd never felt before. Like I was a kid. Um, I remember I started crying. I threw my bag on the floor and I started running in the park and jumping. And I felt like I couldn't believe how grateful I was for just, I was just, uh, and I'll never forget that it hit me like in every part of my body. Mm. And ever since then, I am a firm believer that gratitude the ability to use gratitude Mm. is probably one of the greatest skills um, a human can have. And this shit should be taught in schools. It should be, I I don't know, like if we were just a little bit more grateful about who we were, 100% the world would be better. (laughs) Yeah, it's always in your tool belt also. Exactly. However, I think it's a bit against the uh, the quite primal human nature, which is orient oriented towards um, issues. True. We're why just, do you think that pro- is? How First could a species survive True. that focused no. on <laughs> oh, being no, grateful yeah. <laughs> about <laughs> whatever is nice? Because if it's nice, it you doesn't know, this matter. Li- li- lion is eating me, but the, you know, yeah. sunset looking kind of nice. Yeah, it's, there's True. always. Uh, the struggle of survival has always been, do I have enough food? Do my children have enough food? Uh, do we have shelter? I'll, I'll push, it. and I'll push just... back a little bit on that and say, when a deer gets chased by a lion, mm-hmm. it's freaked out. As soon as it outruns the lion, it forgets the lion existed. Yeah, but deers are, but, and uh, humans, yeah, our yeah. brains operate pretty differently. Deers aren't very good at uh, problem solving. No, no, no. True. I'm, I'm, I'm saying like, uh, but this, uh, the, the, the idea of it is still exactly the same. Where our minds, we are able to keep the lion there in our minds. I think, I think we do have the ability to learn how to turn the lion off when the lion isn't in front of us. Yes. Like, like for example, I, I'm saying like. Uh, it's something we can do. Mm-hmm. Perhaps mm, we're yeah, not. Yeah. Perhaps we're not inclined to do it. But I, I, I still think that, especially in this day and age, because um, when you are in high levels of stress, your blood, uh, your, uh, your heart beats faster. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, yeah, yeah. Stress genuinely yeah, kills you, yeah, it kills right? Um, and so we kind of have to learn how to be able to, um, although we evolved that way. Mm. Yeah, it's a but skill, a skill of today. Changed, right? It's a skill of today. You need well, to learn then, it to yeah. operate today. Yeah. And you know, you have all these people. Well, you have the saying. At this point, everyone's heard it on TikTok or something. What the saying is <laughs> like, you know, uh, while it's like uh, hard times create strong men, and strong men yeah. create easy times, and easy men create hard times, and then yeah, uh, easy times, and yeah, easy times, and, soft and easy times create. You yeah, know, soft men and <laughs> soft men <laughs> trade. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. We're all we all still can get it correctly. <laughs> yeah. And we have somehow our we have convinced ourselves that we are currently living in the easy, easy times. times. And that's what's making us soft. Which is I think incorrect. We are maybe living at least in Finland in you know, physically pretty easy times. I think we are living extremely hard times in the mental sense. And oh, that's yeah. that's why you speaking of gratitude it's yeah. it's a it's an absolute a skill of today but yeah. it really it makes sense that it's not really uncovered yet because yeah. it hasn't been well the necessary skill to uncover to yeah survive in the past while it might very well be today i think that's my issue with identity politics mm-hmm. 
it, it creates victims mm-hmm. uh, mm. a lot of the time. Like, because I'm black, I should be expecting racism in Finland. You mm. know, that it, it, like, that's what people think. Mm-hmm. They, uh, they like, you, you should be feeling like this, um, you know? And they're quite shocked when you're like, I don't know, I'm actually pretty chill. <laughs> like, I'm living my life. Does racism exist? Yeah, sure, of course. I didn't but it's say. not the worst thing in the world. No, yeah, yeah. it's it's, it's not stopping you from going out there and buying groceries and living your life. Yeah, exactly. Mm-hmm. Uh, and um, I think the way the world is now is there's constantly this um, uh, like oppression Olympics. Like, <laughs> like is that the, your term? Yeah, uh, no, I, I think I've heard it somewhere <laughs> before, mm. where. Um, there are levels to how oppressed you can be, right? Yeah, um, it's a currency. Yeah, yeah, it's it's kind of a currency. Uh, white people, I'm sorry, you guys, you we're are not tar- allowed to be... heterosexual males. <laughs> you, are, you are not allowed to feel nothing. Like, actually, when something happens to you, you probably did something to yeah. deserve <laughs> yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you, yeah. you know, um, uh, when, you, when you're black, okay, let's, let's kind of spend some time in that. If you black, uh, black, gay, and disabled, <laughs> you, yeah, yeah, you won. Yeah, you basically can come in floating and like uh, you know. And I know I'm making you know, some secret of it. knowledge of the universe. You yeah. yeah, <laughs> can now uh, yeah, tell only everyone. Potent. Yeah, yeah, and and I I definitely think that um, that way of thinking. Um, of course, there are, are some very real challenges, some very real things that need to be sorted out. I'm not taking any of that away. But imagine if the posture of humanity was more this thing of, I've got agency, mm-hmm. I can change things. Oh, I've got racism here in Finland. Oh, I can either... Well, let's fix it. Yeah, I, could <laughs> either, I could either try and fix it or I could get out. Yeah. Like, you, you know, like I've got agency. Yeah, You know, we're not living... Like um, back in the days where things, were, yeah, probably wouldn't be good for me. <laughs> uh, and uh, uh, but yeah, I don't know. We can we can continue this part mm-hmm. of the conversation. I think we will have another episode in the future for sure, mm-hmm. and we can yeah. probably continue this more higher level uh, part of the conversation then. Sure. But I I see a segue here, and I okay. really need to take mm-hmm. it. Take it because w- while we were taking a break, we were discussing kind of. We were really touching on the immigrant experience in Finland. Yeah. And then, you know, flashing the idea of an immigrant experience in Finland podcast, which we will we will get back to after yes. after this. We'll get dinner or yeah, coffee sounds or so something. Good, yeah. But yeah. Um but what I really want to ask is, you know, give a summary of your experience as an immigrant in Finland, you know, including racism, including the difficulty to integrate, including how have you found yourself able to integrate right and well everything you deem necessary here right um i will say in the beginning Mm. moving here it was quite a shock to me in every sense of the word obviously um it was just it was a very strange experience because coming from south africa um when i saw white people they either spoke english Afrikaans, um, maybe French, but then I arrive here and people, uh, they speaking this language that where I'm like, oh, they, they totally making up words right now, uh, you know, and that was really strange to me. But then when I started coming in and I'd be in environments where everyone would be speaking Finnish or um, the jokes they would make or just, it was just all very something I wasn't used mm. to, um, you know? And like I said, in the beginning, I didn't um, enjoy it all that much, but then I started to lean into it, right? I started to understand that um, that the world is is quite a good place uh, um, if I choose to see it that way. So I started to actively look for all the good stuff You know, things that I didn't understand or didn't know, things that bothered me, uh, like, you know, which one's the milk and which one's the (laughs) whatever. Um, um, I I began to actively go out and start looking for friends. I'll go to places and speak to people. 
um, I would, um, I started to research things about Finland and um, I would start sharing my experiences. And, and one thing I noticed is that in general, there were certain, there were certain rules. N- uh, number one, I learned very quickly to not try and superimpose what I'm used to onto this country. In South Africa, you sit in the bus, someone's going to talk to you about <laughs> something or someone's going to sit really close to you and it's going to be uncomfortable. Um, and you kind of expect that. But here you have to, if you don't understand the rules, you'll start thinking that people are just rude. Right. Oh, we we have square. the no, yeah. no square. Yeah. yeah, we have yeah. we have our own no no square. Yeah. Have you we had don't need, we yeah. don't need the dance. We just yeah. we yeah. have the no no square. I yeah. think we have the no no aura. Yeah. <laughs> the no no aura. Yeah. Um have you I'm, I'm yeah. sorry, have you had an because you said that if you if you do a misstep you'll you'll be notified of it very quickly. Kind of. Have you had an experience where, for example, you try speaking to a stranger in Finland and they're like what's happening? I uh, yeah, yeah. At, At the very least, I have, um, when I first moved here, I remember um, trying to just be outgoing and like, hey, what's up? And I I could see there wasn't, um, there was something missing there. I could see it was very uncomfortable for the person. Mm-hmm. And I was like, huh, that's interesting. And then I'd go to a bar and then everyone wants to talk there. And I'm like, oh, right. This Environment is, place, yeah. is everything. When I'm you traveling to and fro, no one wants to talk. And, and now I'm exactly the same. If you look at me like you want to talk to me, my heart sinks. I'm like, please don't. <laughs> don't talk to me. Um, so I quickly learned that. And I just learned some of the rules mm-hmm. when it comes to racism or any of that sort of stuff. I just simply, I came from South Africa. True. Right? So... And I'm not trying to downplay anything, but when people talk about racism here and I'm from South Africa, it's just chalk and cheese to me. I'm like, oh, someone looked at you weird. That's, that's what, is that what you're saying? Was racist. Like, (laughs) like, and I'm just like, bro, in South Africa, racism looks very different. It's all up in your face. It can affect your actual quality of life, like just in general. Um, in we, what ways? Um, well, in, in terms of like um, in South Africa, you still do get uh, um, like certain jobs. For example, um, uh, if you're black, you're viewed as someone who's m- more likely to steal Um, so, um, there's certain areas at being black where I'd be nervous to walk down simply because, especially if it's at night hmm. and I'm walking because I know that everyone's like, oh, this guy's probably going to do something or whatever. Yeah. Or, um, if you're a certain part of the country, you can actually get beat up if you're in the wrong area. And this goes both ways. I think but for both black and white people respectively, hmm. like, um, If you're white, hey, you you probably are a target <laughs> for uh, people trying to take your stuff. So, and the way South Africa is structured, it's still super racially divided. So yeah. everything has a some sort of racial tension attached to it. Race is like a gaping, festering wound that has not been healed, and and it and it stinks. Mm-hmm. It's everywhere it's um people get killed because of it right and then i moved to finland a society who themselves have been oppressed by uh, the russians the swedish people they uh, um i don't know how F- finnish people would just be like yeah we've been oppressed now we are racist uh, ourselves like um, i think finnish people in general are They're very protective of their culture. Mm -hmm. I think you can so easily misinterpret someone protecting a a, a sort of culture vibe uh, and comparing that to racism or whatever. Like, for example, going to an area and not knowing how to speak Finnish. And some people maybe don't want to vibe with that. 
and like they just like yeah i don't want to speak english oh yeah and there's a pretty sub substantial minority that don't speak english at all yeah true in true Finland. true especially when you go to certain areas yeah. um so so there is that and you know i guess i am a very charitable person if i'm sitting in a bus and someone looks at me like this the first thought in my head is not oh it's because i'm black mm -hmm. like um i just don't know how you are able to quantify that i'm not saying dear viewer that there is no racism <laughs> um, i'm saying like um i just feel like it's very e it, it's ve it's very it's it's very hard to kind of quantify it, at least for me mm -hmm. personally. So my experience here, I haven't felt discriminated against. I haven't felt like um, people have not wanted to hang out with me or whatever, or not want to give me a job because I'm black or anything like that. I do remember this one time though, where I was sitting in a bar uh, and um, I was just having a beer and this white guy walks in and sits down opposite me and I'm just sitting there and he's like, uh, and I was on a phone call and I, mm -hmm. in the call, I was like, what's up, man? And he looked at me, I was like, bro, do you have any weed? <laughs> <laughs> Damn. <laughs> the most racist thing I've ever experienced. Um, well, did you? Uh, I did not, no. Uh, but uh, so, so like, you were uh, st stereotyped incorrectly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was, I was traumatizing. Steer steer yeah. uh, terrible stuff, right? Absolutely. How you recovered from it? <sighs> um, Hardly, yeah. Yeah, you know, I don't, I'm, I'm trying to yeah. read some Victor Frankl to just <laughs> be able to, you know, get through push, the suffering. Yeah, to, <laughs> to push through that, and and I think that would be my message for anyone coming here from. Um, some sort of a country that's very different mm. to here is um, if you are respectful, even if you don't know the language, if you're respectful, you treat people with kindness, you, um, you try and learn the ways of the people, I'd say 99% of the time you'll get by just fine. Yes, online, there are some racist trolls but if that's how you judge a whole society, mm -hmm. you, you're tripping. Uh, if you want to find um, nice people online, you're in the wrong place. I'm yeah. sorry. <laughs> um, I have a, an unfinished idea. I've had simmering for quite a while now. And I've, I th I've never uh, communicated it to you, Matti, either. Oh, no. But I'll, I'll just it was test cooking it in here. the background. Yeah. I'll just test it here. Uh -huh. Um. I also have to translate it from Finnish to English. <laughs> um, racism or unequal uh, treatment based on your what uh, group identity, whatever it is, is in uh, a linear li relationship with how much uh, in that society people can tell about you just based on that group identity characteristic. Mm -hmm. That is why, for example, London might be one of the least uh, racist if you uh, don't account for the very crime-infested areas. Mm -hmm. uh, one of the most uh, non-racist places on earth because there's a million cultures mm. that have just mixed together. People of all ethnicities work in mm. all occupations. However, what runs London and Britain in general is class. Mm. It's so much more prevalent than we can as Finns even imagine. Mm. And people can pinpoint, and I'm not even kidding, people can pinpoint from your accent where you're from, how you've been brought up, what schools you went to, Crazy. your family socioeconomic situation uh, or background and yeah, they can pinpoint you just based on the way you talk. That's why posh is such a big, big thing because it's just how how rich you are. Wow! And that's what divides the society. So then there's a lot of prejudice between the classes because that's 
how the society is structured. But there's not a lot of racism because you can't, if there's a black guy, you don't know whether they, uh, they're they rich and posh. You yeah. know exactly, like, in the first two seconds when they open their mouth and how, what their mannerisms are and so on. So interesting. However, yeah. if a, a society is structured in a way where you can tell a lot about the person based on their uh, ethnicity or their skin color or whatever, that society will end up with problems with racism then. Mm. But those are like equal. We're making, we're vilifying, we're, uh, we're vilifying racism as a somehow separate worse thing than yeah. any, <clears throat> any other unequal treatment, which it, <laughs> it just isn't. It's just prejudice all the same. And yeah, that's, I, I, I yeah. think that's pretty interesting. And that's why, uh, I, I think, I, for example, meeting you, yeah, I couldn't tell mm. anything about you, right? Uh, when we first met, the first right. five minutes, I've, I'm still figuring out what kind of a person is this. What, what were are you, they were doing? Were you afraid I was going to rub you? No, <laughs> not at all. <laughs> I'm kidding. Yeah. yeah, and yeah, that's why I find it pretty preposterous to say that fin- Finland would be a. Uh, like an extremely racist country. Yeah. And, no, yeah. yeah. But so you're saying it's the accuracy of stereotypes. Yeah. Yeah, it, it, it is. Um, we do we do tend to put more weight on certain types of discrimination than others. Mm. Um, it's true. Uh, I mean, um, like you're saying, like, for example, in the in America right now, mm-hmm. You can clearly see a lot of the issues are based on class and not race. Mm-hmm. Like a lot of the, it, uh, like um, some of the similar things are are happening mm-hmm. in America as well. It's like um, people who are poorer are the ones that are getting screwed over mm-hmm. much more. Yes, you know. And um, but it's true. I think because racism. <clears throat> um, I mean, racism is bad. We all agree, mm-hmm. and um, because of the history of it, yeah, yeah, yeah. I think people are all really jumpy about about it. Um, but it's true. So, what would you propose? Like, would you say that we need to put a different lens as to how we view discrimination, or do we do we? Um, I think it's an inescapable issue, just depending on what the problems with the current structure of society are. Right. However, our society is structured all around pretty well. So all of the problems are pretty small compared to like, a, let's say a very, very poor society that's, that has an uh, autocratic regime. Right. That's like shitty <laughs> all, all around. Yeah, but then racism being the kind of us vilifying racism can actually in Finland kind of be like, you know, fair enough because racism can be one of the biggest issues we have. Yeah. If, if the other issues are so kind of watered down mm-hmm. yeah. and the baseline for live, for the quality of life is so high. I'm going to go out on a limb here. Yeah. Uh, I'm going to go out deep a little bit. When it comes to racism in Finland, I think it's a lot more complex. Mm. Um, from what I have seen, the people who have issues with uh, people from other countries, it usually has to do with people bringing their culture very strongly here. Mm -hmm. Like, uh, for example, um, um, let's say people who come from Islamic countries, Mm. for example, they come here and they bring their ways and their vibe, Mm -hmm. uh, right? And say laws start being made to to kind of bend around that and accommodate them whether it's right or wrong whatever i don't I'm not talking about that and i think when certain people see um begin to feel um that they're oh, it's, it's horrible to say oh, it's when fine, certain it's people uh, begin to feel like they're being invaded that their their culture is being diluted Mm-hmm. in some sort of way and then people are coming and not accepting the culture that is here mm-hmm. um their frustration against that 
you is usually against uh, from what i've seen against the culture of that but it just so happens to be that a lot of the people that come from these cultures are a different color Mm -hmm. as Mm -hmm. well on top of that Mm -hmm. Uh, which which just i think so then you'll be like hey uh that's racist and then once you actually talk to the person you're like i don't don't care what color he is no i just i just i just want to feel like people coming here are trying to integrate and are actually um, cognizant of our ways and our values. And I think certain, certain religions do have uh, values that do go completely against what Finnish people uh, view as good and right. Like, you know, especially when it comes to, to women and, 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 Mm. um, and that sort of, stuff because Finland is a very egalitarian country, you know? Um, and I think, yeah, I think it, it's somewhere there. And then, and then of course, then people will be like, oh, is it Islamophobia or is it whatever? And there's no real good answer mm. to that. But, but I do think that it, it it's a little bit more um, nuanced. I'm sure there are people who are just like, yeah, that guy's black. So, Yes, I've got an issue with him. Well, you know, the average yeah. average IQ is at one hundred. Yeah, that's so right. half the population are below average IQ. So really? Yeah. Uh, no, yeah, well, that's, well, that's the average. Okay. Yeah. It's Fair normal enough. distribution. <laughs> yeah, yeah. hundred is the the mean, yeah. and then half of the population. So it figures out you have some people yeah. who are completely out of their minds. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, true. Yeah, that's, that's true. but then but yeah. then again, like I don't know. The, this will also sound horrible to some people and yeah i don't as, uh, i'm not as high in the opp- oppression you know hierarchy so yeah. i don't have the same shield here yeah, this. Yeah. <laughs> but still you have to somehow even if you want to kind of embrace a very mul- m- multi-cultural film in finland yeah and you want to impress the you know, human rights for all i think most people are for human Which rights we for all. We, we yeah. are as well. Yeah. <laughs> you have to still <laughs> you have to be able to sympathize with the, you know, 40, 50 year old Finn True. that has lived here for well, their entire lives. Mm-hmm. And they've, for example, gone to work in Helsinki. Mm-hmm. And they've taken the train to Helsinki every day mm-hmm. of their, you know, career. And in the eighties, nineties, you know, everyone in the train is Finnish. Everyone trains white. Everyone train speaks the language they do. Yeah. Now, if you take, you know, the P train from Pasila to, you know, go to Malmenkarton or Myrmäki, at well during work hours, yes, but you know, you take it at 11 p.m. during the night. Yeah. You can have, you know, situations where most of the people in the train do not speak Finnish, mm. are well different looking than you. You have to sympathize with the feeling of, you know, yep. there is something off here. It's just something True. weird, weird here. Yeah, and the mm. feeling of uh, not belonging in your so own country. Somehow, country somehow almost. being replaced. Yeah. It's not completely unfounded. I've experienced. Yeah. We, we've, yeah. we we take the P train very often. Yeah, this is our offices in Myrmäki. Right. So Exposed. yeah. <laughs> well, yeah. <laughs> Someone wants to find us now. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, um, I think also. If we one step back mm-hmm. to why we have vilified racism so much is that in our kind of well, it's 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 a dumb way to clump the world, but in our Western world education, if you ask a person, you know, what's the worst thing that has ever happened to hum- the humankind, mm. they will you know mention some some genocide, so mm. Armenian genocide, you know, the sl- slave trade, the United States, the Rwandan genocide, uh, the Holocaust, right, and those were all basically based on. Well, the slave trade is just, it is dif- a bit different, but mostly yeah, yeah. based on ethnicity. Yeah. But Even black people enslaved other yeah. black people. Uh, yeah, yeah. yeah. Slave I, would, I would argue that Atlantic slave trade was based on opportunity. Yeah, yeah. But just, then, yeah. The, then yeah. the treatment of the slaves yes. in the United yeah, States yeah, yeah, after yeah. that. Yes, definitely. Based on ethnicity. Yes. Yeah. But maybe if we knew a bit more about, for example, the Soviet Union, where <laughs> there's you know, we don't really know about genocides based mm. on class. 
we only know about genocide exactly. place based on ethnicity. True. We don't know about the gulags in Soviet Union or, you know, Mao's China. No, yeah. it's very no, no. You you're absolutely right. Um, I think. Um, but then, uh, w- what is the solution? Like you you were talking I about. Would, uh, yeah. The pr- the I I would. Uh, Perhaps one of the reasons why we don't like to think about uh, genocide based on class is because it's much harder to uh, push aside. The thing mm. is, uh, in Mao's China, all of us three would probably have been informants. Yeah. We would have been informants to the government that w- would have led to executions. Yeah. Fuck. We're not inherently good people no one is yeah and that's yeah. a pretty tough lesson yeah because all of your goodness it's in the palms of your hands yeah you have absolute uh autonomy over you and that's it's a it's an unsettling thought however with racism it's uh it's simple simple-minded yeah. people that didn't understand enough mm-hmm. uh, that's why they treated them unequally i'm not like them because i know more Mm. Much yeah, easier. because we are so much more intelligent than the people in the 1700s and 1800s. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so I would think that would be one of the reasons, because it's how do you approach uh, oppression in the the Soviet Union? It's the the one lesson you can learn from that. Let's say you read the Gulag Archipelago. It's a great book and every, everyone should read it. One of its biggest tenets is Soviet Union was not uh, a solid institution that oppressed, uh, that oppressed the people. The people oppressed themselves. Mm. The totalitarian institution was in everyone's head. Mm. Right. And that's uh, how I don't know a way to let's say in schools try to teach that to people so so are, are you saying that um do you think the more meaningful discrimination in our world today is divided along the lines of class and uh w- would you say like if you were tasked with with uh focusing on one thing mm-hmm. would you focus on um, the uh, the discrimination between classism or uh, like you obviously are saying that uh, uh, racism is like the the easiest thing that people do. It's like nice and quick. Mm-hmm. So would you actually focus more on like, hey, actual actually the real problem is the difference between the rich and the poor. Well, if I had answers to that, I, I think <laughs> the world would be really. Uh, all the problems would be fixed easily because I'm just a 22 year old idiot. <laughs> no, no, it is quite interesting because there's there's all of these there's all of these questions. Um, I may I go on? Oh no, yeah, yeah, oh, yeah. Sorry, did you, were you however, going? yeah. Uh, I think the answer to that is pretty quick. I I wouldn't say classism, but if you just uh, played the lottery, or uh, let's say. Um, Try let's play a game. Try to guess the uh, net worth uh, of an individual. Uh, what's the biggest predictor? Well, it's the country you're born into. Yes. That's yeah. Like the country you're born into, I think determines. Uh, it's something like ninety-eight point five percent of your uh, the projected net worth mm. of the individual. Imagine that. That is crazy. So yeah. it might have gone down. Yeah. Uh, but anyway, the point still stands. It's a big predictor. Yeah, mm-hmm. it's, a, it's a huge predictor. And it has little to do with ethnicity. It has, but if, I, I, I would say it's just a lot more, <laughs> uh, it's t- too complex of an issue to start to uh, discuss the thing globally. I, I, want you, I want you guys to steal men the argument that um, that in fact the culture isn't as important. It's actually better for us to all just view each other as humans 
and create some sort of like um uh, like the way Greta Thunberg was kind mm-hmm. of viewing that. I want you to steal that steel man that argument for me. Say you believed it. Mm-hmm. How would you go along? How would you go around trying to to defend that view of it? That actually perhaps culture is something that divides us more yeah. than mm-hmm. whatever. How well, I you think you can to? pretty easily go for the route that as humans and as people, you know, there are good people, there are bad people. Well, most of us are probably have both of them inside mm. of us right but after all as humans we all have some you know something that makes us human mm. you know, we have humane values if we if 99.9 percent of us walks down the street and you know you see a crying baby <laughs> on the street you'll probably pick it up and try to you know deliver it to someplace safe mm. you'll probably try, try to care for it now let's say you live in a society that is ultra hyper ethno nationalistic. Mm-hmm. You have, for example, you know, culture that is divided based on your ethnicity. Yeah, you yeah. might actually develop a way of thinking for people mm. that leads to a person, you know, knowing not nothing. A baby is probably the most kind of innocent thing you can have. Yeah. You can develop a way of thinking where some person might walk down the street and think, good, yeah. <laughs> that person is of an inferior, you know, presence just because of their ethnicity. Right. I will not help that or I will do something even worse. Yeah. And that's something only, you know, ethno-nationalistic culture can do. Because yeah. that's the only thing you can make out of a baby. Like, what's its skin color? Yeah. Or, you know, what's its sex, sexism right. or whatever. Hmm. Mm. Um well I, I I have two two arguments or two sort of ideas with trying to uh steal man a cosmopolitan or a very low resolution of uh humankind mm. which is quite hard because if you try if if you just try any low resolution idea reality strikes in and it doesn't work. The practicalities that's, that's, of yeah, India. That's, yeah. that's yeah. why they that's why only young people usually have <laughs> low resolution ideas because then reality comes in and then Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> You're doing a good job of us. Yeah. <laughs> however, <laughs> however, um I really like this quote from uh Slavoj Žižek. Uh countries never a genocide has never happened without poetry. Genocide has never happened without poetry. Yeah, it's it's something like that. Okay. Uh, and the idea is, uh, if you start creating ideas that are um, s- somehow put us, pin us against each other, uh, it's pretty easy. It's pretty mm-hmm. easy to do. Right. And I would see that that as a case for cosmopolitanism, because if that's the case, if the case is that it we're e- really easy, people are, and we we are, we're very tribalistic. Uh, if that's the case, then you should try to fight against it, which would then make you a cosmopolitan because you are pushing against tribalism. Right. So that would perhaps be a case for cosmopolitanism, in a pretty like pragmatic sense. Um, then uh, I had this other idea that came to me first. It goes something, you should become a podcaster. You're now interviewing us, yeah, which yeah. is yeah. really <laughs> interesting. Switch in the dynamic. Yeah. Um, Matti uh, sort of uh, already touched upon this, uh, upon this, but there are times, hmm, uh, for example, our ozone layer <laughs> was uh, we were we were going to lose it. Yeah, a few decades back, and that would have destroyed everything. Right. UV radiation would have just killed everything. End of <laughs> life as we know it. Yeah, society comes together, decides let's not use those aerosols anymore. Mm-hmm. Let's actually start fixing it. Now we're like 85% there, 90% there. I don't know the exact number, but things are pretty good. Yeah. Cosmopolitan action. 
Mm. Uh, so during times of crisis and the more absolute, the better in this case, we have a tendency to throw our prejudice uh, out of the window mm. uh, for the common good. Mm. So finding those and that's why that's why politics is so often also uh, focusing on crisis because it it uh, breaks the smaller mm. uh, tribes mm. and brings them together right. and that's how you can get a large following fair that's why we focus on crisis so crisis may have an effect of uh, bringing people together uh, that that would be perhaps so, another case so more the more developed the world becomes, mm-hmm. during the more severe the crisis, we always tend toward towards cosmopolitanism. Mm. Perhaps, yeah. It, to 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 like f- fix yeah. something like if an alien invasion happened yeah, right yeah. now, we would. In I don't care what um, skin color you are. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Or you're, you know, you're human. take the rifle. <laughs> let's fucking go. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Or like something like a sunburst. Yeah. yeah. But 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 it almost feels like um, to get back to the other yeah. side of it now. It, it it almost feels like we can only maintain that for short periods of time. Yeah, like, it's a, like, like a the spirit of entropy comes. Yeah, and having any sort of large structure. Yeah, it's mm. always breaking down. Yeah, the society is like um, it's <laughs> like a cookie dough. Yeah, you have to always be pushing it to the yeah. form, and then it just comes just uh back down and everything's shit again and then you <laughs> have to yeah yeah uh. then should should we not uh i mean i guess this is another way to i guess to take this is that do you think that humanity that we would all be better if we all began to be a bit more spiritual yeah, a, a bit more, um, you know, the fact that this is just a body. Mm. Um, do you think that if if um, humanity together began to start valuing the more spiritual aspects of who we are, like the ancients did mm. this, uh, it it seems to be ingrained in us. Yeah, but the ancients it, it, weren't really cosmopolitan. The, oh yeah, no, they, 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 the they tribes were, killed the other tribes. Fair. This is this day is, in day out. But yeah, this is this is very true. Um, but I guess the the point I'm trying to to get to is that do you think that if human because now we have like a mm-hmm. massive global system, mm-hmm. um, we hopefully. I was just about to say we're not going around killing each other, and I was like, actually, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, but do you think if we all took more of that approach. Do you think that would be better for the world? Or do you think it would, it's too vague and just, well, uh, something yeah. you can't really grab your, your hand on? Well, in our context, obviously, in, in our personal, at least in our personal Finnish, Finnish context, society, where we yes. have a, where we are, you know, living on this on the highest highs of this individualistic hedonistic dream yeah <laughs> where and you know i need to so well. yeah, yeah i i <laughs> need to focus on myself and i need to focus on you know getting the nice things for me and my my pleasure needs to come first it's very western you're you're yeah. very you know low tier pr- pleasure like if i if i want my pleasure absolute pleasure to come first always i'll just get you know an automatic you know, flashlights that's pumping 24-7. <laughs> and then how happy am I? Yeah, Arne had an imagery of, you know, peeing on, on his floor in the last episode. So I, now I decided, to, <laughs> I decided to take the part of having, you know, an absolutely grotesque <laughs> image in your heads. Um, yeah, we, we have a crisis of meaning in mm. the developed western world because we lack a common story that ascends our own small lives Mm -hmm. because a small life 
there are great people, great great men in the, the men as a human uh, right. that have an effect on the whole uh, society. But that's right. always a you know one in a million. Right. And for some reason, we we're thinking that everyone can be that one in a million. Yeah. But only <laughs> so ninety nine percent point. Yeah. People, that, that's an impossible dream. So perhaps here we could do with a story that ascends our own small circles. However, uh, I don't think spirituality would have any any effect with uh, uh, decreasing wars or mm. suffering or racism or any sort no, of. I, other I think we are decreasing those with. I think. Yeah. Yeah. I, I'm with Slavoj Žižek on this one. It's a uh, uh, religion is also one of those stories. Yeah, can, it is, it's yeah. it's poetry you can use for whatever the the purpose is. Mm. And the funniest example he has is from uh, <laughs> uh, you know with uh, Buddhism, for example. Uh, the idea is uh, you're the leaf in the wind. Mm-hmm. But that's okay. You can just uh, let go and enjoy the ride. Because you can't affect the wind. Mm-hmm. Just uh, go on and enjoy life and do what you can. Right. Uh, <laughs> and uh, he, he tells it, of course, much better than I do. But, <laughs> oh, I have this knife in my hand and the universe is just uh, <laughs> directing me. And then, oh, <laughs> which is, uh, I think, it's pretty, true. yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, I think it's a nice uh, analogy of uh, how you can use the the idea of forces stronger than you acting upon you yeah. uh, for bad. So, no, I, I don't think uh, if we were just a bit more spiritual, the all the wars would end absolutely 100% well, certain. Well, of course, we, we've, been there, we've been there. We've seen that. Yeah. yeah. But I think we can very much, <clears throat> you know, if you wanted to prophesize about a ideal society or an ideal world in the future where we can you know the issues of war and you know discrimination and racism i think we can raise the baseline high enough for them to be very much non-factors just by increasing the quality of life for everyone yeah but yeah after then do we create the same crisis of meaning for everyone if for example AI can do 99% of our jobs. Right. And that's, quality of that's, life has to yeah. account for yeah. the spiritual yeah, yeah. quality of life. But I mean like the meeting the oh, very yeah, base yeah. standards of yeah, life. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And then, well, then can we use spirituality? Yeah, no, your no, time to answer. No, I, I'm just... For I'm once. Just, <laughs> I'm, I'm, the, yeah, I'm just quite intrigued by this idea that a lot of the shit that happens in the earth is driven by selfishness self-gain, mm. things that you want to do for yourself mm-hmm. or for your country and everyone else can just kick the bucket, right? Mm-hmm. Um, uh, I'm, I'm not saying that the world would just... I am saying that the world would change in some way if um, selfishness was not the, 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 the main thing. Mm-hmm. And how do you get to a place where being selfish isn't the main thing, where it's about the common man, the common good? How do you get to that place? Like what, what, um, is that just something that shouldn't even try and be injected into, um, I guess into our culture in general, mm-hmm. like, uh, because, if we somehow, if each person was, if everyone, and I know this is airy fairy stuff. It, this yeah. is this isn't. No. I'm not making a proper argument with this. But, just, but if in general, people were more willing to, um, because in a society, we are actually in a social contract. Mm-hmm. When mm-hmm. you are in someone's presence, whether you believe it or not, for a little bit of moment, for a little moment, that person that you say hello to or speak to is your responsibility in terms mm, yeah. of the impression you leave on someone 
will indirectly or directly affect them to leave an impression on someone else. Mm-hmm. And a butterfly and so, effect. Yeah. And so yeah. it goes. If everyone had this idea or this feeling of like, hey, I have more power than I think I do. The things that I say with my mouth and the mm. the way I act does have an actual uh, tangible effect on the world around an me. Infinite effect. Yeah, yeah yes. exactly. And if if we grew up being taught that we are not helpless, that mm. we are um, that we are here, and and I don't know how else that would be injected into humanity outside of like I guess some pseudo spiritual aspect, or perhaps it will just be like a logical. Um, yeah a logical way of thinking being like, Hey, listen, when you go out into the world, every yeah. little effect affects other people. So I, I, I just think, I don't know how that would be implemented, but I do think that something like that would actually, I think it would have, it would have the biggest change. Go for it. Coming back yeah. to Jordan Peterson for the third time. <laughs> I think we're closing the loop. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, there was a really interesting Q&A once and it uh, <laughs> there was a question um, why do you always talk about cleaning your room there are bigger issues than that hmm. and right. uh, why don't we focus on the bigger issues because they're uh, creating mm. so much suffering why do I have to clean my room why do I have to be nice to my parents and so on and he lays it out, out so nicely the idea is uh well, exactly what you just uh, proposed. Mm, let's say you convince uh, one person of the idea uh, in a way that the person understands it as well. Mm. Uh, and the person then tells five others and they change their mind as well. Mm. And those five others tell five others. Mm. Takes like four rotations and you have the entire world. Mm. So you've true. changed the mind of the entire world so true. with one argument. So the entirety of human uh, society is structured in a way that all changes are always exponential. Mm. That's why you always have to focus on the next small incremental step because so every true. incremental step is part of an exponential uh, equation mm-hmm. and you can't get to <laughs> the the end of the equation without taking the incremental steps but mm. the incremental steps feel meaningless if you don't know that it's exponential yep i'm not making a change yes you are you just don't know or don't understand yeah, yeah, yeah. that you're at the beginning of mm-hmm. the you don't see exponential the trajectory change yeah so and I think that's an idea that you can communicate to people. People just, it's not uh, a common understanding yet. Mm. I've found out most people feel helpless right. in their situation. I can't change my life. And for the love of God, I can't change the society I'm in. Yeah. But life is very easy to see as a linear thing. Yeah. Right. And plus, I I feel like this message, um, this sort of, uh, if all of us started taking this Mm -hmm. posture, I feel like it could cross over even into religions. I think most religions out there, no matter what they believe, I feel like in a lot of them, there is a golden thread throughout is, um, you know, you are human. There's something bigger than you and love is cool. Mm. like you know so well, i think that's not very hard to um push into um like if you cross different religions and it's like imagine if people raising their children and then now it comes to like mm. families yeah i guess you can always go further and further and then it comes <laughs> to families where imagine in families the way you raise your kids is in the same sort of Thing. The way mm-hmm. you live your life, mm-hmm. you teach your kid, your, te- your kid grows up, starts a social media account, starts speaking about this yeah, stuff. Yeah. And, mm-hmm. and it just, uh, I feel like, I don't think it's, 
anything that we can implement a law around, but it has to be the collective human consciousness. Mm -hmm. We we all have to somehow understand that if we come together, if we want to really, um, if we want the world to be a better place, and of course, in in combination with laws and policies and whatever, but like if everyone just had that same sort of mindset, I do think a lot of issues would be better. And, and you know, the thing that annoys me is some of the people who are preaching and speaking about, um, I don't know, um, things that are happening in the world, like, um, I don't know, people getting paid low wages. Mm -hmm. uh, you'll see someone on Instagram, oh, getting paid low wages. But that same person will go to a restaurant and treat the yeah, waiter yeah, yeah. terribly. Mm -hmm. I'm like, you are going completely against your whole your whole exactly thing. Yeah. You know, uh, you talk about climate change, like cut um, fossil fuels completely. Do you do you understand that doing that in one go would kill millions of people, billions, uh, billions mm -hmm. of people, and that um, you actually that it's not so simple. It's not so mm -hmm. black and white, and you. It's deeper than this, uh, hey, we need to do this. Like some mm -hmm. of these, um, uh, I've seen it in the UK, there's these uh, just stop oil yeah, yeah. people. Number one, they block the roads. So the cars stop and are still running. So yeah. they're using up more <laughs> gas. Number two, there's people who are in a rush, people who have to get to work. Or ordinary or, people just living ordinary or lives. Ordinary people. I feel like that just goes against... Yeah everything that you're preaching there, there isn't consistency mm -hmm. in 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 um uh like in thought mm. like and i just feel like if we brought it back to the individual level oh you want to do a change with climate and whatever oh why don't you stop driving if mm -hmm. like if if this is like something if that's so you, clear to you if it's yeah, so clear yeah. to you then convince other people well <laughs> i have a really in, uh, interesting example of or it's a it's an interesting counter argument to the basic idea of sociology, which is uh, almost the entirety of your uh, life can be determined by uh, your societal surroundings. Mm. They shape you, uh, and it's uh, it's from a very uh, a prison psychiatrist who had a very long career. I think something like thirty five years. Wow. So he had an estimate uh, estimated I think 50,000 patients which is un an unimaginable number. Right. And yes, almost all of them and this was decades ago. Right. So uh London was a gang-ridden place. There were whole areas that were just really fucking poor and if you mm. uh were born into that neighborhood there's there was all, basically no way out almost no one got out and those were the people who ended up in prison so okay sociology was right uh, the thing he always told to uh, his patients because he said that almost all of the, the inmates tried to toy with the idea that you know, maybe I'm a criminal because my parents, my dad beat me and mm -hmm. we were always poor. Mm -hmm. And maybe I have these problems because my family background was so bad and all my friends <laughs> were violent and so on. Uh, you know what he answered? It's because you're lazy and stupid <laughs> to all of them. And you know what happened? They felt relieved because he gave them their autonomy back. Amazing. Don't follow the story that you're shaped by surroundings and suddenly you're Amazing. not. Amazing. But if if you don't have that idea in your head that I can actually shape my surroundings and the idea of this exponential change, then it, it will never happen. Everyone mm -hmm. will be uh, completely shaped by the sur their surroundings and they will not ascend whatever is there position in society and i think that was really 
That really, is powerful. Really <laughs> fucking powerful, yeah. That is powerful. Yeah. And and it was just so funny. It was so simple, the, yeah. the, his response. So, yeah. That is, that is really cool because I can imagine the relief of feeling like, yeah. oh, actually, it's not something that uh, is outside I can of change my this. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> In, in Finland, do you guys have some sort of, in school, do you have some sort of um, life uh, module or something? Like some sort of, um, in South Africa, we would have these, um, like in high school, mm. uh, what do they call it? Life orientation. Mm -hmm. um, I think we have it as an alternative if you don't want to do or if your parents don't want you to do usually yeah, we, we have, religious studies we have right. we have school and career orientation lessons okay. and then we also have a religion or then like yeah life spirituality i don't know what they do there i i was <laughs> yeah, i'm not sure yeah. i think it they just play games or something <laughs> yeah, yeah. but mm. then then again fair enough that's probably yeah, a that's good pretty thing good to do they're, they're right. kids yeah I, w I wonder is there is there any example of any country that uh tries to I don't know. Um, no, there probably isn't a school that, or a, a country that tries to um, take this model of, um, I don't know, I guess, teaching critical thinking in school and being able to, um, uh, you know, understand your own emotions, like some of these things that we talk mm -hmm. about mm -hmm. and that you actually do have power over, over your choices. Like, for example, in the States, um, I don't know too much about the whole critical race theory or whatever. I, it's, it's, it's really confusing. But mm. some of the arguments against that is that it's teaching black people that, hey, yeah, you, you, you're probably pretty fucked because you're black um, in general. Yeah. Um, and that's kind of the message that... Critical th race theory, critical theories are uh, theories that try to uh, focus on a very specific issue in science and don't try to explain uh, everything through a, a specific lens. Yeah. They look at a, a very specific thing uh, very critically. So critical th race theory would then be applying uh, your understanding yeah. or your theories of race to everything. Yeah. Right. Or like yeah. Sub critical, or supplements. Critical theory. Oh, right. Or like there are plugins. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. I yeah. guess that, yeah. that, that's a good way to and explain it. And very interesting it. is that feminism is a critical theory. Shit. <laughs> what, what is just your... one small lens to look at interactions through, right? Or society, or whatever issue. Do you know? I, I haven't. I haven't spent any time, um, actually diving into feminism, um, and trying to to understand, uh, like properly. I mean, I, I get like very vague ideas about it. It's not something that I've actually spend time on would you mind just quickly are you able to describe it in the way you understand it uh, like what if i were to ask you what is feminism how how would you how would you describe that i think arnie wants to take this one well there are several uh, several uh levels where you could say there's a idealistic baseline feminism which would be then the most common answer, which is uh, there should be an like <laughs> equality between the the sexes, equal treatment, and so on. Uh, I disagree. I'm joking. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah, you are clipping that. And uh, <laughs> and, and uh, fair enough. Yeah. However, you don't gain much from that idea. That's a nice idea, but how do you go on from there? Mm -hmm. uh, if you look up books on let's say read bell hooks for example mm. uh, that would be books describing the experience uh, of uh, a certain group of uh, women in society mm -hmm. so then i've gained gained uh, so much so much insight from reading bell hooks really yeah, because I need you give me a, a list of the, all these books you've been reading, man. <laughs> uh, yeah, it's just uh, especially because it's from uh, uh, several decades ago from uh, the U.S., uh, where let's say in the forties, fifties, sixties, there was a huge disparity between uh, like uh, how the sexes were treated. Yeah, 
So fair enough. Very, it's very interesting to read about that. Yeah. And from reading those uh, pretty extreme examples, mm. let's say how differently men and women uh, in a society like that approach sex or mm. marriage or uh, intelligence or emotions or mm. uh, there are tidbits of information you can take uh, to your own life, even though in Finland we live in pretty much the most egalitarian yeah. society in the world. So yeah, that would be then another uh, more s- sophisticated type of uh, feminism, which is understanding that uh, the, the the sexes have largely speaking different experiences and yeah. you can gain from because i'm not a woman i've never had a, a i've never for example been a neurotic person mm. for a very long time i couldn't understand why people felt anxiety about problems because i've <laughs> yeah. i've basically never felt anxiety from problems in my life really yeah it's just how i've i'm wired so so then what what are you what what, what happens do you just focus and deal with something or do you I might be sad. I might be instantly anxious about uh, stim- stimulants. Let's say I get a, an angry message from a fa- friend. Right. Of course, I feel anxious. I'm a human. Yeah. However, usually bigger problems just push out of my head because mm. I I'm not a neurotic person. Right. 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 So yeah, those. It's really good to learn about <laughs> how people are different. True. Yeah. Do, do you know they are? Um... Uh, sorry to take a little. Do you, do you, do you know that there are people who don't hear a voice in their heads? Yeah. Who are these people? <laughs> I don't w- think they're people. Like it, it's, it, it's, it's a pretty su- substantial amount. Like it, it, it's something um, like ten percent or twelve percent of people don't have a inner monologue. I, I think I was watching a, a video about this one lady who doesn't have an inner monologue, and. When she reads, Mm -hmm. she doesn't, like, she's not reading the words. She says that in her mind, it all kind of um, shows up. And it's almost like, I don't know how, her mind basically works like a computer. It's a weird (laughs) day. She feels like when she does a test or or something where she has to do like multiple choices and whatever, she says she can literally look at it once and and she, she can do things like, super quickly simply because she's not slowed down by the process of actually reading what's on the page i i don't even know how to properly explain yeah, it yeah. but it's weird as my, hell. my inner lo- monologue while reading has disappeared completely as well really do you, so do you just absorb i don't know i <laughs> read the brain is a mystery man fair enough <laughs> but it, it, it it really slows slows you down. Of course, I can trigger it back, but when I read, when I really get into it, I just read. <laughs> Don't listen to a voice in my head anymore. God damn! How do I stop listening to the voice in my head? Yeah, I I, I have no <laughs> idea. Um, I've been um uh, because I've been trying to get back into reading quite a bit. Mm. I used to read a lot. In fact, um. Mm. When I was younger, I um, hated reading and um, I got in trouble at school because I apparently couldn't spell and I didn't read and my parents were super upset. And then I picked up Harry Potter. Uh And do you know that the uh, things shifted? I was starting to get in trouble for reading too much. (laughs) (laughs) Like, you know, Um, and then... I spent a lot of time reading tons of fantasy books and then I moved on to self-help books. Um, uh, like a lot of them. Um, and then like some Christian apologetic apologetics and like, uh, used to read a, a, a bunch of CS Lewis oh, yeah. at, at, at some point. I, I mean, that's years ago, but mm. I just remember that dude could write. Mm-hmm. Um, and, um, and I don't know, I think something shifted when I moved here. Oh, yeah, it was because access to English books True. are a little harder here. Like, yes, I can go to the library, but it's like 
a little section. I don't yeah. feel really free to be like, oh, what is this? Most of the time I'm like, wah. God. Yeah, it's finished again. Yeah. <laughs> Wait, <laughs> don't tell me I have to learn it. Yeah. Like, um, and I feel like that I, I took a dent in my yeah. reading because I used to, um, because when my, uh, my parents used to go through really difficult times, mm -hmm. I escaped through yeah. reading and being in a library was like my, that was my sanctuary. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I would literally, I would just sit there and I would have so much peace just reading. But now I'm, now I'm, uh, I'm finding it hard to read books just for knowledge. Like, yeah. like right now I'm reading, I'm reading about, um, why uh, it's called guns, germs, and steel. It, oh yeah, uh, yeah. Um, I've, I've, I've started reading it because, um, I don't know, intrinsically I've, um, I think a lot of people have this idea that, um, African countries or other places um, developed differently because, and I'm not even joking, because of IQ. Like mm. I made a video about it once where, when actually it's, it's so much more nuanced and, and that sort of stuff. But anyway, I'm kind of reading, trying to read that, but I find it so freaking difficult sometimes to sit down there and be like, okay, this is not a self-help book. This is not a fantasy story this is pure just like i'm learning well, have you tried maybe, maybe the book is just not interesting yeah maybe or maybe change your perspective because if, if yeah. it's there is not just learning if you learn things that are interesting they fit into a story a map mm. that then interests you true and it doesn't have to be fantasy land because uh reality is actually much more interesting it sounds, sounds like you are think. yeah sounds like you are maybe treating reading as a means to an end instead yeah, of an end it in, in itself true and people seem to have a true. guilt about yeah reading. yeah they like somehow yeah, if you buy a book you need to read it before buying the next book yeah <laughs> and somehow like uh, spending hours reading would make you uh, an instantly better person which it doesn't true maybe maybe there are some uh, unhealthy views about it but i do think um uh, that i have in my head mm. but I, I mean that book is really cool though I, i'm not uh, I, I am actually really enjoying it because um it's kind of crazy coming from africa mm. um I, I can't believe how some of the these preconceived ideas mm. are actually in the back of my head mm. without knowing it mm. yeah. like without knowing it i was like why why has um, certain places in Africa just turned out to be shitholes and mm. like, and like Europe, they, they, they had freaking ships and stuff. And mm. we were like, you know, like doing other stuff. But once I got started getting into it and realizing number one, there have been many massive yeah. um, uh, cultures and stuff mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, in, in Africa. That's, Number one, and you also you guys had sheep as well. It's <laughs> yeah, yeah, and and also just, um, I just found out like the coastline, mm -hmm. um, the way the coastline is shaped. Um, there isn't a single river that goes from sub-Saharan ah, Africa mm -hmm. uh, all the way down to the south, with, that, yeah. with um, uh, where a ship can go yeah, all yeah. the way through. When you look at Europe, Full. you know, like yeah. this. Uh, there's so much space for ships to go mm -hmm. and, and there's so many areas that create like natural harbors mm -hmm. and stuff. Mm -hmm. So, and like little things like that, um, things like um, the types of animals that yeah, could yeah. be yeah. domesticated yeah, yeah. and how humans evolve and uh, with the environment, like the environment plays a massive role. Uh, as to how they evolve. And I was never taught that in school. Yeah. I was taught that Africa, the only reason Africa battled is just because of slavery. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Like, like we were never, I was never taught about Mansa Musa. Uh, yeah. he, he's literally the, the richest guy ever. To yeah, yeah, yeah. ever exist. Yeah. Like that brother went to Mecca, right? Mm -hmm. um, and he, uh, and yeah. he went through <laughs> Egypt and 
he he gave away gold and yeah. caused inflation. Destroyed, yeah, yeah, destroyed the economy. Like you know, destroyed why did I never yeah, know yeah. about that guy? Like, I don't know. Uh, but anyway, rant over. There was, yeah, there was look, a yeah. very interesting Kanye West rant there. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Kanye West mentioning Manson was like hundred times in a in an interview. Yeah, yeah that's it's a very very interesting thing because I also I, I was like twenty when I or nineteen when I was first introduced to the idea of uh, like large uh, historical processes shaping the world yeah. today which was basically, it was pretty easy to farm in Europe. Europe had big mammals that were easy to domesticate. Yep. And that's why Europe developed a bit faster mm-hmm. than everyone else. And that, that's why uh, we made the larger ships that could then sail the seas. Yep. And then there's this thing called uh, uh, our, uh, well, germs. <laughs> yeah. Which you then bring and then... Yep, and you get yeah. from the domesticated yeah. animals and then you go yeah. to a different place and it decimates a whole yeah. population. Yeah, exactly. um, quick one, I'm just um, quite uh, quite interested. Um, do you guys have any small little theories that I guess could be considered a conspiracy theory? It could be about the world or whatever. Something that you personally believe might be true in your own mind do you have anything like that and it, yeah, if you do i, do. I want to oh, hear that's it that's the wrong question to ask us okay i'll i'll just yeah, yeah. Uh, embarrass myself very quickly all right uh-huh. uh don't pick a, um save something for me <laughs> <laughs> well i i wouldn't say i believe this but i'm very fond of the idea that uh, the reason why uh almost all con- c- cultures uh really like trolls giants goblins Mm -hmm. and so on (laughs) is uh because well first of all uh it doesn't take uh that many centuries or uh well millennia for all of uh society to just uh all all little artifacts yeah even the smallest ones to just uh, decay uh due to erosion yeah so it's pretty possible there has been civilizations before our current uh iteration don't you dare so, touch my theory but anyway yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, you have so, that you have the so, atlantis one <laughs> what if we've had uh different uh species of human some giant oh, some you're going far looking afield like with goblins one. some oh. uh dwarves in the mines in the mountains <laughs> yeah. and all of these different societies uh well having their own strengths and weaknesses mm. but then this very general uh human comes but they they can like organize mm. so well they take over and that's why we have all those stories i really like that idea. Uh, that's yeah. that's really nice how about you no, no you go first uh, um my one is uh, similar but different is the fact that um, humanity's growth and evolution is not as linear as we previously thought. Um, and a lot of uh, some of these um, ancient structures that, uh, let's say, let's go to Egypt, for example. Yeah. <clears throat> one thing I've been kind of looking at is um, in Egypt, you can quite clearly see that there's two different industries at play. Oh yeah, yeah. They, there's literally fucking bad drawings on giant structures. Yeah, yeah. like yeah, what, yeah, what yeah, the yeah. heck is going on there? <laughs> um, and, and also, I was watching this one video. Um, they've got these pre-dynastic, so pre-dynastic older. Yeah. Uh, the dynastic jars. You've got these clay jars. They're beautiful in their own way, but you can clearly see it. It was made by hand, or whatever. And then you got these pre-dynastic jars. Not made of clay, but made of like granite and corundum. Some of the hardest stones Mm -hmm. we have. Not only that, I watched the video where they finally, um, they use CNC machinery to measure it. Like uh, uh, to measure exactly and compare whatever. Mm -hmm. The, The numbers that came back from this, and this isn't some conspiracy theory or whatever. These are actual engineers. Mm -hmm looking at this so they look at this and they say listen this thing is almost perfect like 
Like yeah. we we today mm-hmm. would battle to make this, and and then they took it even further. A mathematician took the jar, yeah. and he did all these numbers and all this sort of stuff. And his statement was pretty wild because um, when he did his maths mm-hmm. things, he was able to break down the jar into like an equation that you could literally input into a computer and it would make the jar, yeah. mm-hmm. right? And he said that, um, he said that it is for this thing to be a, yeah, to be, have been made by accident. He said, there's more chance of a universe being born out of my nose. Mm-hmm. Like, you know, and, and he was saying the only thing we humans know where you take an equation and you put it into something and it creates something. The only thing we know that does that accurately are computers. Mm. That's the only thing that we know that can do that. So now the question is, these people who apparently didn't even have the wheel, uh, they they, they yeah, had, yeah, yeah. Um, they used copper, which is uh, like a four or a five on the scale of yeah. hardness. Yeah. I, I don't know. We're able to, to cut things that we don't know how to do. Like yeah. we would literally battle. Mm. And not to mention that the way we would try and make that, you would need some sort of wheel thing to- Yeah. Uh, to make but, a round structure. To, yeah. yeah. And, and, and it's not only that, you see these, dis- uh, uh, these discrepancies all across the planet. Yeah. Um, so anyway, I'm very fond of the idea. I feel like it will change the way humanity views itself no, they're remnants from the uh, earlier civilizations yeah. with the giants and the goblins and <laughs> <all>. <laughs> all right. i'm gonna do two things i'm gonna first substitute that uh-huh. and then or add that uh-huh. and then because i it, it's not completely a new thing i'll add one or two you know very listener friendly and easy conspiracy theories okay okay right. okay so first of all what you said and uh-huh. what arne said uh <laughs> in connection to the entire, you know, Sahara desert being a rainforest around, what, 12,000 years ago. And the very same structures being found there. I don't... The Eye of Sahara? Yeah, Yeah. for example, the Eye of Sahara. And I don't have enough of it in my recollection to give a very good story of it, but... Arne probably remembers it. Some Greek philosopher or... Uh, oh, oh, the dude who who spoke about Atlantis. Yeah. Um, um, Solon. Yeah, there are, uh, there yeah. are several. Uh, the, the only problem is that in the fire of Alexandria, almost all of the recollections... Yeah. Can have but who basically mm-hmm. went to where, wherever the Eye of Sahara is uh-huh. and was told there that here is the city. The city looks like this. I was like, yeah, well, there was the city and the city looked like this. Yeah. <laughs> and it was like half made of gold and crazy, whatever. And then they find that some of the biggest gold mines from near the Eye of Sahara. Yeah. And you know. Shit. But, but that's why I decided to add two more easy conspiracy theories because you, you understand that wasn't very... That was pretty it's a huge rabbit hole. To yeah, go yeah, yeah. It we is. need it's like <laughs> it needs it's, its own video. It, yeah, it's <laughs> not one; it's two episodes. I think. Yeah, yeah. and don't mix uh, Von yeah. Daniken and the aliens uh, behind uh, Christianity. Yeah, into yeah. That, because <laughs> yeah. it actually ties into it pretty yeah. well. Oh, so, oh but snap. yeah, yeah. Uh, easy conspiracy theories, uh-huh. which might be a good note to end on. Yeah, I one. Uh, there's well, I'll introduce two. One has Osama bin Laden. Another, another has Hitler. Okay. And Hitler us. one I know know less about, so it's easier to go through. But you know how... The Hitler when, one is good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> how when, you know, the Allied and the Soviets were advancing towards Germany. Yeah. And the Soviets got to uh, Berlin first. Yes. And, well, allegedly Hitler killed himself in a, in a bunker. Yeah. Or shot himself or took acid or whatever. And then the Soviets took the... Allegedly took the body back to Soviet Union, although we have Hitler's body. But never... No photographs, no evidence, nothing. Uh, up until maybe like, I don't, I don't know how many tens of years later it was, but when they were finally, they finally agreed to 
you know, release a sample of the skeleton remains they had. <laughs> they took the sample and had it tested, and it it's was a female. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, and that's not a conspiracy theory. It's a yeah, well, that's yeah, fact. Yeah. yeah, that is. Yeah. <laughs> I don't even know how to react to that one. <laughs> okay, what's the next one? Yeah, well, well the, the, the next the one, next one is actually a conspiracy theory. Ar- Arne was right. That was uh, Arne was right. That wasn't really a conspiracy theory, but you can make a lot of conspiracy yeah. theories from yeah. that. Um, well, this is so fucked. This is so fucking stupid. Uh, no, no, it's good. It's good. The, it's good. <laughs> during the uh, raid on Osama bin Laden's compound, yeah. Well, of course, the guy allegedly went to a room and you know saw Osama bin Laden and shot him dead on the spot. Yeah. And then they took Osama bin Laden with well the body, of course, with them to to. I think they had they had some special per- permit for from maybe Pakistan mm-hmm. to fly. To, you know, initiate the operation from the Pakistan airspace. I might get the country completely wrong, but that doesn't really matter here. Right. But they took it back to the air, air, air base, mm-hmm. where they somehow, you know, identified it as the correct Osama bin Laden. Mm-hmm. And then, for whatever reason, for a religious reason or something, they flew <laughs> in the middle of the Indian Ocean and, and checked it in. Yeah. yeah, decided to dump the body in the Indian Ocean. And of the body of Osama bin Laden, there's also never been <laughs> a single picture. And there was even, I think... So do you reckon it, it, it wasn't... Uh, if, you, if you were to bet your life on it? Well, what do I get in return? <laughs> you get to live. Yeah. <laughs> like, someone's like... Yeah. Um, if you are right that it is Osama, it was Osama yeah, bin Laden, yeah. <laughs> you get to live. If Fuck it, no. If it, yeah, no, 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 no. <laughs> why, why would I chuck it into the ocean <laughs> with no pictures ever being released? Yeah, what yeah, was the point of that? Just one guy telling yeah, yeah. everyone, yeah, I, I killed him, man, I yeah. I promise. And he, yeah, he's made a really good uh, uh, career from just speaking about his experiences, like five books and <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> all that the podcasts wild. in the world. Yeah. Yeah. So and there was something else with you know like the first a picture being released and a picture of uh, that they claimed was the picture of that Osama bin Laden. Right. And it might have even been published. Maybe it was only published by you know a leak to a newspaper. Maybe by the government. I don't believe by the government because it would be too bad. Probably right. only through a leak to a newspaper. But then that photo was later. Uh, proven as fake, right? All right, that uh, there's there's too <laughs> many question marks. <laughs> I don't know that that sort of stuff. I, it, uh, the thing that frustrates me about it, it uh, because unlike the stuff we're talking about, yeah. like going back in the past, the people who know the truth that are chilling, probably yeah. eating, eating right now or relaxing, yeah. there are people who actually know. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but what's going you, on? Then uh, at least for me. That oh, I have a third conspiracy a, yeah, yeah. theory. I'll just explain this. That cre- at least in me, it sparks like a drive to uh, one day be at those tables. Oh and yeah, I get you. Because uh, it's just most people just want to live their life in peace mm. and not know too much because it might be dangerous for you. I'm. I don't think. So I'm, would you want to know the deepest, darkest? secrets of humanity like ones that might like yeah of course would you yeah yeah like i'm talking about the level of stuff where you actually find out there's actually something in the water yeah, yeah sure yeah, yeah, sure, is- sure sure <laughs> lizard people i don't know <laughs> they're making the frogs is- gay <laughs> Well, that's, oh, a fact. Uh, yeah. that's a fact. That's a fact. Just <laughs> hey, yo, exposing, it, uh, exposing uh, fetuses or almost any sort no, of no, uh, no, no. early, <laughs> early uh, our Spotify uh, rankings. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, but if 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 you expose uh, like a child in a, yeah. in, in in a womb to just uh, enough estrogen, they'll just become female. I, I can see in both of your eyes, you guys are like, oh. The, 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 <laughs> okay, frogs, the frogs don't become gay. The frogs become female. That's the yeah. thing. Or just, Alex or Jones just was sterile. wrong. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
low enough dosage, they become sterile. High enough dosage, they become female. Yeah. Not gay. Clear, mm. important yes. distinction here. Yeah. Mm. Uh, yeah. The, <laughs> or I, I, feel, I, feel, I, feel, I feel like uh, because um, there is a lot of stuff I will yeah. just say to quickly. No, no, no. Well. Um, I will say that there are a lot of very frank discussions mm -hmm. that are incredibly uncomfortable that need to be had. Mm -hmm. like, uh, uh, the ones where even for questioning, mm -hmm. you, you, you just completely mm -hmm. cut out of society. Mm -hmm. You know, like there's so many Bring things like on. that. Oh, yeah. I, well, that's I that's <laughs> another yeah. episode. Thing, yeah, no, no, yeah. no, not now. But that's, <laughs> yeah. I, I like, I live off off of that yeah. Yeah. i want to do that. that that's what i want to yeah, do yeah. in my life yeah. yeah because because that's why i um like even in the uh american race right now mm -hmm. like mm. listening to someone like rfk yeah, yeah. jr yeah my guy knows like yo he's yeah. not afraid to say yeah, shit yeah. right yeah i don't i don't yeah he knows something about his uncle oh yeah like honestly like um but there are some of these discussions. He's one of those guys who are hard now walking and sleeping or eating or whatever. Yeah. That, you know, <laughs> yeah, that yeah. shit yeah. that we don't. Yeah. And shit that we'll never know. Yeah, might not be walking for long. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Also. I mean, I, I, I just find those. Um, I think there are some discussions that are really difficult. Like, for example, um, in America, why are black people like 13% of the population mm -hmm. and yet cause like. 50% of the crime, mm -hmm. whatever, mm. you know, that's a difficult mm. discussion. It's like, um, I think we all agree that we don't believe a certain skin color just makes you inherently more violent, mm -hmm. but then you break that down and you're like, what are the family structures? Like, yeah. what, what are, what are, um, where are these people living? What are they being taught and whatever. And I feel like even discussions like that. Yeah you could be completely shut down when those discussions need to be had need yeah. to be had because it's yeah. like yo like how do you like it's yeah it, it's right in front of you there yeah. anyway but yeah <clears throat> i want to ask uh this is i i don't i'm not sure where i heard this but this is the best best podcast question you can ask i think mm -hmm. okay and this is why i want to ask you this Maybe to end this. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> it's Friday. It's getting late. Yeah. 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 <laughs> what time is this? <laughs> it's Arne's bedtime. So, yeah. <laughs> my, my phone actually. Yeah, yeah. Like an, an hour ago. Yeah. 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 <laughs> but uh, the question was, mm, what is the biggest mind mindset kind of shift or change that you have had to make recently? My biggest mind shift change mindset mindset change yeah that i've had to make recently hmm that's a i i see i can smell the, the that's a very podcast question it's like <laughs> peak podcast um <laughs> hmm. i think Hmm. I guess I would have to say the biggest mindset change would be that no one actually knows anything. Like, um, no one actually, we can talk politics and whatever, but yeah. in the grand scale of things, in terms of meaning, purpose, um, living your life and whatever, everyone's got their own subjective view of things but no one everyone still makes dumb decisions yep. and um people in power who i view used to view as like oh they're in power are actually just as fallible mm. just as confused they also wake up feeling shitty yeah. and um and because of that the only person who truly matters when it comes to creating purpose is me and uh, for you and yeah, then yeah. for everyone else, it's <laughs> themselves. Yeah, exactly. But hopefully, hopefully the way I um, focus on me has 
a positive effect on, to bring it full circle, on the people that I encounter because they are my responsibility for that moment. And then we create a butterfly effect that goes around the world and everyone starts cleaning their rooms. And next thing we all sing Kumbaya and float into the heavens with the aliens. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> That's the perfect way to yeah. end the podcast. It's a good awesome. episode. <laughs> It's a pleasure. Oh, that was How a- long was this? <laughs> <laughs>